Signed permit application for 587 Main Street, your CBD store. Anybody here for that? Sure. I'm here for 587 Main Street. Not. Hey, you emailed Corey and you said you would be here. But. Should we give him a few minutes? Because we, we can do the endorsing with Corey Grove first. Yeah, yeah, I'd want to do that. Let's have a subdivision plan to endorse. If you want to okay. give him a few minutes. Sure. Um, so, what is that? That's, uh, that's under the subdivision for 40 Grove Street. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the two lot. Okay. Is there anything here other than just the. Plans to sign? Any nope. Okay, we need a motion to uh, motion for the no engineering memo on that. We're endorsing subdivision plans. I don't think we need to get one. But I, I have emails like I checked it months ago. Okay. It's all they did everything that you've asked for. Engineering reviewed it as well. Okay. Um, okay. Get a motion for the board to endorse the preventative sub subdivision plans for 40 Grove Street. So moved. Uh, second. 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 All in favor? So I guess they're over there. Just start to yeah. sign. Yes. Yeah. Make sure to sign every page. Yeah, every single page. How many pages? It's only a few for five. Uh, yeah, two copies. There's two sets of minutes, October 1st and December 10th.
it's even more boring in person because you can't change the channel. Or <laughs> mute. <laughs> 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 We can't hear me anyways because it's Did everybody get a chance to sign in when you came in? Because that's another way to fill time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make sure you There's sign in, please. Okay. What count are you doing? I'm good. I'm good, sorry. I'm organizing this thing and it launched today at 3, so I guess it was a lot of crap going you know, towards me at the moment, so <laughs> it's also not I'm working out well, that. so. Um, I actually started a new job in February. Um, we will have to chat. I'm not going to make any changes. I'm just a lot of chat. Okay. Right. The good news is that I think there's a regular staff meeting on Mondays. So that means I took a three in the office on Monday. Cool. Okay. Let's see what we can do. It does seem like they are like not easily clean schedule. Is that true? Right, right, right. Which would make things a little easier. Right. Harvard, no, no, I'm actually, it's a, uh, I'm going to the private sector. It's still higher ed. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah. The office is in Wakefield. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's huge. Yeah. We have so much going on. It would be nice. I mean, that's one of the major advantages. It's like a bus yeah. for drop out at school. Yeah. I can yeah. do quick errands and stuff like that. Other people want to start thinking about this. Okay, that's exciting. Oh, that's good. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah, it was a special black pen. Otherwise. You guys get a, any piece of that uh, high 90 straight? The nice pipe straightening it. Thing over there. I worked on that 10 years ago. <laughs> came up with concepts, the same concept they're going with. Yeah. And it's just taken, it takes 10 years to go bring the DOT around, bring the community around. And, you know, they've been working on it for not you know, long. But we've had a whole time, I mean, 10 years ago. Yeah, when I was with my other company, we went to a meeting discuss parts of this project. Were you with CBT? I was with C CDM. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. But they were seeing something like that. Uh, NTT, yeah. does it sound right? Because this, because the new project doesn't meet the definition. It's one of those definitions that the project has got a little presence. But it doesn't. I can't remember that. Well, oh. but yeah, I mean, yeah. I want that. Um, it's a lot of some of the different parties that own the property are working on um, so there's a local company that has an interest in the property passed on. Yeah. So I do want to do some sort of intermodal uh, station like where it's it or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
so like, like GNC. <laughs> yeah, so it was just like a similar one. Right. So three is all that's needed. I mean, if you feel free to sign it if you want. Why don't you complete it? Go fix it. We missed one because it's. <laughs> 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 all right. Here's one. Okay. So do we want to pass on the sign from it for now? So. Did you have concerns with it, or do you generally are you generally in favor of it? Or? I have a concern. But. So, because I was thinking, since he's not here, we could just continue it, and then in the meantime, we can research whether this type of business would even actually be allowed in town. Oh, is that what this, is that what I think it is? Yes. Oh, I wasn't even paying attention. I just thought it was a stupid name. <laughs> um, I can't see why they wouldn't have a band. Like why, why don't they just continue the whole band trip? Whether it's a lot or not. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, is it, I, thought we, I thought we voted um, against all of this. Stuff. Well, so it's a question of whether hemp is regulated under Chapter 94G of the National Animal Laws. And that I was just trying to figure out. I'm not able to determine right at this moment. Okay. But are we the ones that make those decisions? Well, no, no. The town already no. banned retail marijuana. No, so no. Right. If somebody else should be looking into it rather than us, based probably on my sign department yeah. would be yeah. looking into that. So we can do that anytime and continue this to next time or kick it off the agenda if it's not in the last business. Okay. Right. Let's do that. All right. But haven't they already moved in? Yes. Well, they're definitely in their operations. They've already moved in. Yeah. Yep. Oh, they've been yes. operating for probably a month okay. now. 
<laughs> I hope somebody else made this determination. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Just you know. um, How'd they get a bill from? Do you know when they got their the purpose? I don't know. Are they reading? They stopped back on Raspberry Beret left in November? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so it has a black awning with pink. Yeah. I, I wasn't aware they were I think the product comes from the same plant, it but, does come from the same but plant. has nothing to do with. No THC. Yeah. Right. I mean, they, they sell it at whatever so. the name of the natural it's store in is. Also. Yeah. It's, it's in all sorts of products. It's in coffee. It's in. But I don't know if it technically yeah. falls under right. that. Yeah, which was like really all encompassing. It is very broad. Okay. The, the, the one we voted on at town meeting? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Right. So, would you, do you want to? Well, I don't want to vote on a sign that may not be allowed because the business could not be there. But if you want to offer them design critique, you know, they should probably just add a band to the bottom of that. So that it sort of, there's some consistency of the street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Okay, so we'll continue um, 587 Main Street sign permit application until what? The next meeting. February 11th. February 11th. Okay. Is that the one that's really false? It's on, um, um, not yet. Okay. All right, so um, move that the CPDC continue the sign permit application for 587 Main Street to February 11th at 7.30. Okay. Second. All in favor? Okay. Um, next on the agenda, minor amendment for Johnson Woods. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'm recusing myself. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Ted Moore apologizes in other states and not to be the first here tonight. Uh, as you know, we filed a request for a minor modification to the law building 52 to stay in its current location. Uh, one of the abutters took issue with that and you were kind enough to allow us to continue it for a long period of time and kind of the rest. Um, I'd like to introduce a couple of things tonight if I could and then request uh, the individual ruling of the commission. Uh, I have a letter, you may have seen this before, so I apologize if it's a, a repeat. I'd like to quote sections from it and I'm going to submit it to you. It's from, uh, signed by 13 uh, abutters to the property, 52, so then 52, uh, two of whom reside in the property immediately next to it. And I have another letter from the individual who objected before. This is addressed to you. You understand the foundation has been relocated from its initial orientation to where it sits now on White Oak Lane. We urge you to approve the construction of the home at its present location. Ted Moore, the developer, Johnson Woods, has often moved and adjusted buildings to conform the topography to save trees to make the whole development attractive. We applaud what he has done. Certainly every time a house location is adjusted, a little nearer to one of us, a little farther for another of us. This is what we expect in a 300 unit community. In case of our neighbor, we understand he's looking at the side of one of our nice townhouses. It is 30 feet away from him. Most of the homes there are 15 feet apart. We understand the heavy landscaping has been offered to provide privacy. And they request that uh, the commission uh, approve what is being requested. I may submit that to the chair. I'd like to, I think, more importantly read uh, a letter that uh, I brought to the uh, planning office this afternoon, uh, which was all the end of last week. This is a letter from Hanny Hanna, who was the individual who spoke before with his attorney in opposition. I read that into the record. My name is Hanny Hanna. I live at 151 Johnson Woods Drive, and we meet your brought to Building 52. I previously expressed concern with proposed location of that building with reference to my property. My attorney and I have been working with it more for these last few months to arrive at a fair resolution. I am pleased to report to the commission that my concerns have all been addressed. 
which the board has agreed to do extensive planning to screen my property and give me individual rights so that I have a protected right to use my backyard. As a consequence of our joint efforts, I can express my support for the commission allowing Building 52 to be constructed in its current location the foundation for that building. I ask that the CPDC allow the building to be built as requested by Mr. Moore. I thank the board for giving us the opportunity to enable us to reach a satisfactory resolution with Mr. Moore. Also with that, I submitted a letter uh, that outlined in that letter certain details that we've agreed upon. Uh, and we certainly have no issue with the board's need to, to allow 52 to stay where it is, uh, to have those big conditions imposed as part of the approval. I also included with that letter uh, some drawings that were done by a landscape architect showing the nature of the screening involved, both the species involved, the size of planting, and the projected size of maturity. Uh, also indicated that we'd uh, do some slight regrading in the backyard of uh, Mr. Hannon's property and extend a fence to give him more privacy on both sides. Uh, that is what satisfied him and we hope it will be satisfactory to this commission. Uh, that is the only matter which we requested the board to act on uh, and uh, if you have any questions, we'd be more than happy to answer them. I um, drafted a revised decision for you based on this information that we got today so that it's, since it hadn't been revised in many months, I just cleaned it up. Um, it's largely the same as it was. When it's appropriate, we request the opportunity to comment on the draft decision. Okay. Let's just look at all this information here first. Uh, did you get a copy of this letter? No. Not the first question. It doesn't look familiar to me. But uh, it's not, not dated. No date on this. Do we want to assign a date to it? I don't know what date that was. Either. As I, I mentioned, maybe not likely, but the regulation state that the uh, Mr. Hannah's building has three units. This letter I sent you or gave you today was signed by the two other unit owners there. Then you have this letter itself. So all the individuals in the building are supporting them. Can you talk a little bit about the regrading that you're doing? Is that shown? It's just basically in the patio area on the rear of this unit to make sure that we're not going to create an issue between the two uh, structures because we're a little bit closer than it was originally anticipated. But it's, it's within probably six to twelve inches maximum. And is the fence you're extending this uh, this little section that's sort of on the White Oaks Lane side? Fence. You, you mentioned extending a fence. This fence is here now. And that would be extended and then put fencing there as well. However, because it's common maintenance of the uh, free yard area, they have to have a wide enough room section with that to stay open to the equipment you would in mow and do a fence <clears throat> but the fence isn't really shown anywhere, so we don't. 
On the plot plane. Is that what those three? Is that what that is? I'm gonna see one. I don't see the other. I think. What's this? Um, what's the dark line represent? The dark solid. Line. So, so on this, the, the, no, yeah, is there's the this. Pat, is that the patio? Is that a patio? Yeah, it's a back. Yeah, that's All right. Back. So this is really right. Two, three, four. So this is a patio here. Oh, so the line represents a view from his patio. Exactly. Okay. The, yeah, that's the fence. It sounds like you want to put, you're going to put two sections of fence up, basically to define both the sides, backyard. Both sides, yes. Yeah. Why does, do other properties have that? Okay. Do any of the other properties have that? Some do, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I assume that somebody explained to them that, um, Trees will take time to mature. They do. They're different growing rates. Um, obviously, the cedar and the other variety grow much faster. Uh, but they, uh, I'm not sure if they put in a letter, but they've got the planting height and the maturity height. And those two heights up in there. Okay. I just don't want them coming back in you know, May when they get planted. Yeah. Yeah. Like, These are no. so small. Well, they're planting height and cedar growing. I know. I know they are. He, and they're drawn, too. But it doesn't mean that that person understands. Does he have a copy of this? Does he have a oh, copy yes. of oh, all yes. of these? Absolutely. <clears throat> this was done with the council, too. So we just did it. So what's um, what's this memo here from to you, Julie, from Mr. Bergeron? The Hayes, um, I believe that was submitted as part of a letter from um, the owner of 162 Gotham House Drive related to the garage. Um, Is this a proposal? It's, it was submitted a while back. I think it's dated February. That was one that you already discussed and you said you disapproved. Yeah. These two go together. Yeah, I see that now. I'm just getting my dates. The 18s and 19s. Yeah. 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 Right. The one that's related to what we're talking about tonight is October 14th, 2017. So remind me again how we tie these two together, or if we tie so these together. So at one of the meetings, I think before I had my baby, you guys 
guys had talked about getting a comprehensive plan from the developer, like all has been about changes for right. the site and their trickle down effects. And I lumped um, Mary Beth Cannon's garage into that because that would be the siting of another building, right. which ha hasn't currently been approved. Um, and so I have some conditions related to that on page four of the decision. Any contemplated change in changes, including the location of a garage to satisfy um, a commitment that was made to her need to be presented and approved. So what is um, uh, six eight white oak white oaks lane? What building number is that? That's fifty two. That's building fifty two. <laughs> so can, yeah, can we did I not put that in? Can, yeah, can um, where is that? Because I thought in most instances I put the yeah. numbers. That's the building. So this building's over here. Okay. All right. So in every instance, I. Shows 50 51. So, I guess I'm, I'm assuming that you're here to object to any mention of that building in, in this. So, we don't have a comprehensive plan of all your proposed buildings. It's a private matter, this is ongoing. <coughs> How is it a private matter? It's a private matter for me. Yeah. It's a private matter, but it's before me somehow. Us, before the board. There's nothing that we filed uh, over the question at all. I, I, there is an issue, obviously, between a, a private homeowner and the developer. Uh, it's not been resolved. A uh, plan was submitted to you previously that was rejected as being inappropriate. Um, but it really has got nothing to do with building 52, and until a building, until it's a resolution between them of where the garage is going to be and what it's going to look like, it really shouldn't be part of the process. Except that this isn't a plan, right? This development is not a plan of individual buildings, and that's where we got to before. It's a, it's a, it's a right. plan it's community, and so to the degree that one of them ties into the other, yes, they, they are related. Um, I, I don't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily want to hang one up for the other personally, um, but right, we got here because of the um, because of the fashion of the piecemeal fashion that everything has progressed on Absolutely. this. So here we are back a, a year later, about, um, and right that one still hang that some issue is still hanging out there. Um, and again, you're suggesting that we address it in a piecemeal manner. I and that's that really what we're trying to get away from, because this is a- The real a issue on that one is that if there be an agreement of where it's going to be before we come back to you to ask you your permission to have mm -hmm. it, it hasn't even been agreed upon the location. Um, so as a, this building 52 is there, everybody's in accordance with it. Uh, it seems to me that trying to latch one onto the other is inappropriate under the current circumstances. The private issues is what you resolve between the parties. They have anything for you to act on. And to hold up the building on building 52 seems to be an effort to control that really is the appropriate for the circumstances. It is true that no matter where that garage goes, it's got to be approved by you. But it's not right at this point for discussion. And we did not apply for it. Where do we stand on that? Where do we stand on the negotiations for this building that you were So I sent a letter, of, um, I believe October 21st, um, outlining the, the number of different um, 
solutions that we suggested to Mr. Moore. Um, and um, there's a, I've included a map on it um, with it as well as a narrative um, which walks through uh, you know, a list, let's see, a list of four, five, six, seven, eight, eight um, locations that we've discussed with Mr. Moore and none of them have been acceptable to him, including um, an offer to accept the garage at the entrance, which is clearly the biggest concession we could make that we are currently, that Mr. Moore has um, had us use while he was con you know, constructing the garage. So that was how we got in there seven years ago. So we paid rent on a garage that is at the front entrance because we paid for it. Front entrance to the development, you mean? Sorry? The front entrance to the entire development? Right. The front entrance to what? The front entrance to the development. So that's considerably, so here's my, thank you. So here's my house, or condominium. Um, this was the original proposal. Um, this, this was not the original proposal. This was the original proposal, which Mr. Moore pointed out to all of you um, in December. It was December, so I think it's a year and a month. Um, Mr. Moore then proposed the location in the front yard um, of my building, which you saw the stakes and how that was positioned, um, and said that, told Mr. Moore that that would not be acceptable. Um, then there were several other locations. I proposed a location across the street, which would represent the same value. It actually is not quite the same value because the garage was here that we had discussed, which was very close to my home, and you know, it made sense for us to pay that much um, for the house and the second garage, given the proximity, um, the location across the street is probably, you know, in terms of, from my perspective and what I paid, would be the best solution. Um, there, there is, you know, a condominium here that's owned by Jean, um, and then there's condominiums which will be here um, that you have the um, the plans to. So there's a number of com and there's 15 feet from um, in all directions. Understanding that I'm not an engineer, and you know, I, but I have measured it to the best of my ability. From there, Mr. Moore proposed this location in front of the Grays and the Dyers, which are, I can give you the numbers, um, which uh, is building number 39. This is building number 39, and the proposed, um, the proposed locations are actually the, place, the locations that are approved um, are are like here, they're actually in within view of um, the Dyers and the Grays. So I think they'll be somewhere up here. And Mr. Moore proposed that a three-car garage, which he, you know, from the single-car garage, it became a three-car garage and then was later um, suggested as a two-car garage. Um, none of those proposals were acceptable to uh, the Grays and the Dyers. Um, Next, we suggested um, a location here after the two buildings here and prior to the ledge here. Again, I recognize that I'm not an engineer, but that seemed like, you know, still the proximity, you know, becomes less and less desirable to me. Um, then uh, we suggested a location here and here. Here's the building that you've asked to be removed. Um, and it's included in the draft decision that this be removed. So um, I suggested a location here and here. Um, and if you can see this little driveway, since the development has been under construction, um, uh, I'm not quite sure what to call Tony, um, but Tony is, seems to, appears to be the construction manager. So he's um, been parking here throughout the development of the construction of the construction and has has not, as far as I know, Mr. Moore has deemed that to be a safe location for him to park in and go back and forth in multiple times during the day. 
Um, so that was five. And then the last one we proposed was this location, which clearly, you know, which is where we've been since we purchased the property, said we'll just take the garage that we've been using um, just because we want to resolve this matter, which is clearly not the value that I paid for. So, so those are the locations. My understanding was that the commission tied the two, um, two situations together because of your frustration with, just as Mr. Weston had said, the piecemeal fashion and said, before we, um, before we finish, finalize the situation, we would like a comprehensive plan of any alterations made. So during this year, um, so prior to this year, you know, there's been six to seven years of conversation, then the year of additional conversation, the additional recommendations, all which, rep all again, which represent a willingness um, to reach a resolution. So um, that was my understanding. So that's, I, you know, Julie knows best, but that's my understanding of why it was included and why um, the other conditions were, were placed on it. So Thank Mr. You. Moore is not been happy with any of those locations. Well, he's not happy with you taking the garage that you're in now? He was not happy. He said absolutely not that oh, that was so not he's an obviously, option. He's and obviously just rejecting every every it, offer. So, so and then it. it's been, if you heard, there's been different locations just to make those shots. No, I, I only heard her location. Pardon? I've only heard. Um, uh, oh, no, the he option. mentioned that he mentioned a couple of locations there. A couple of which he mentioned were proposed by him. Oh, number three. Number Pardon? three. Yeah, number three was Mr. Moore's. But that's opposed by the abutters. And I wrote a letter to Mr. Mr. Moore number, accepting the location. My, I wrote a letter to Mr. Moore accepting the location, saying that that we would accept this location. However, uh, we didn't see, we knew of two strong objections to the three-car garage and to the two-car proposal. All I was ever interested in was a single-car garage that is, that is outlined in my purchase and sale. Um, and despite, yes, he did a three-car garage here, and then he said he'd do a two-car garage, and I, and asked us to be the inter intermediaries, speaking with the Grays and the Dyers, which of course was a very awkward situation on two different occasions, which we agreed to do in order to try to resolve the case, the situation, the case. Um, and, um, you know, Morris and the Dyer Dyers were none too happy, um, which we convey back to Mr. Moore through um, Larry Healy, the head of the grounds committee for Johnson Woods. So I had those conversations. We also sent a, a letter to his, another attorney of his uh, that he's had dealing with the situation. So we've accepted, we've suggested and accepted everything except the front yard location, which the commission also said would not be acceptable. Um, and I do have drawings of, um, I, I know that you've discussed the, the fact that the location is not um, acceptable, but I do have drawings which I absolutely accepted of a garage, of a single car garage, which we discussed. Yeah. So yeah, I had no objections to that whatsoever. This is relevant, Mr. Latham, insofar as if we agree that it could go in any of several locations, we would know what the plan was for the building. They've got to agree on where, what location they're going to put it on. Right, but apparently Mr. Moore is just playing the it's not going anywhere game. And it's got to be resolved, but I right. think it's related to building for and they, they have five well, rights. So I, I like the amendment the way it's it's written with it's it's not directly tied to 52. I mean we can resolve the issues on 52, but it is related to um, a, an amendment to the PUD. Mm -hmm. um, and so mm -hmm. so the way that it's written is that um, is that prior to the um, uh, issuance of a building permit, you need to take care of these these other issues that are um, that are uh, that are deal with this whole development area, planned unit development area. 
um, it deals with the, the um, structure that was never permitted and it deals with the plan the plan for the how um, structures on the site are going to be arranged but the can, I, thing can I just add yeah. one thing so if we want to if we want to modify if you want to modify the planned unit development I'm sticking with the statement before that okay let's get a comprehensive plan can I just the way we've been working and it out is that when if there's a little tweak in the foundation design it's like within five feet of where the original one five was feet. is that how good you're serving <laughs> what what Come we on. have been doing on the proposal is we give the proposed plot plan with the new foundation and then we put underneath that where the approved location was and we give both of those plans to the town for application for building permit. That's something that and we've been stated since this nonsense mm. began. Yeah, right. yeah. The last yeah. Sorry, I thought yeah. that was a procedure yeah. that we had worked out. Side, so I could see um, sure. comments of other people. Thank you. So that was a procedure down. that Sorry, I thought we had worked sit. out Thank going you. forward or how we were going to do if you want. anything that was a little bit different than what was on the original plan. Right. Right, and then we right. can determine if you need to come back for another minor or major there, there already is a comprehensive plan before you. The only thing we're asking to change is building 52. This is a new structure now that's being proposed. That you're saying you, we've got to come back with a comprehensive plan showing that new structure. There's nothing that, was, that requires that new structure. I mean, it seems you're saying, to me okay, so original, you know, the, then the answer is going to be there's not going to be a new structure next time you come. There is no going to be no structure or no we're, change. We're no, not going to no allow another change. change. But it seems to me you should weigh each change on its own merits. No, it's a planned unit development. Right. I think that to uh, Mr. Bergeron's <coughs> point, those are the changes that are weighed on their own merits. So right. the foundation twists a little, and and listen, I've been I've been dealing with this development for quite a few years, and I always appreciated that Mr. Moore came in and said, "I want to save this or re landscape yeah. that," and it looked right. Um, didn't know what he was up to exactly, but you know, a building missing by five feet <laughs> is not inconsequential by any means. And that level of accuracy and construction is outrageously ridiculous. So, but we accept that now. You, got, you seem to have resolved well, that they're issue. They're not missing by five feet because they're missing by five feet because we've saved the tree and we have to offset where the tree was or the design since it was started in 84 or whenever we whenever we started the 2004 i guess when we started this this the designs of the units now have more <coughs> than what they were in 2004 you know 2004 to 2019 so there's little tweaks that right. yeah, yeah. but those are little tweaks it's it's not like you're adding six buildings or changing, and you've changed some unit sizes, I think, right? Some went to twos, some went to threes. Right, we went, we came back <laughs> when we did that. Okay. Right, but this is a this is another building. Well, and when Ted was here a year ago, there was talk of like how he's got other things in his mind. Like he's got the plan on his wall, which is his dream, right, right. and and so you know, people when they meet with him to purchase a unit and they might see one plan and have one idea but it's not a, maybe not reflective of what's been approved. Which, which the reason why you reminded me, right. the reason why the, um, the requirement to come up with a comprehensive plan because even while we were sitting here we had like three different plans all showing different ones, um, different, different building locations um, uh, in Right. There was this juggle of, well, this one was counted here, this one was approved, this is where we're really going. Yeah, but we, we came back and we and we cleared the whole decks with one plan. Everybody agreed, this is the plan. And, and we said, all right, from here on, it's, this is where we're going. And every year we give them an updated plan of where the units are constructed. You know, so this is one coming due now. Uh, of where each of the units are and they're not you know we did go through the zoning article change 
that you that you approved and supported with us on this, and that wasn't that was again just an adjustment to make it better to get more landscaping area in, in front and to move traffic court down a little bit. That was that allowance <coughs> to let us count. Yeah. We own the property over here, but we were we were allowed to push the buildings back closer to the lot line or the, the PUD zone right. line. Right. Also, if I may, during the process with Mr. Hanover, a comment was made that he saw a plan that didn't show the building in a particular location, if you recall that. It's important to note that Mr. Hanover did not buy from Mr. Moore. He's the second owner. So he never really had any communication directly with Mr. Moore regarding the purchase of the I know there's concern about people buying not understanding, but that was a that was the situation with the second second tier buyer. So I, I request that you please not hold 52 hostage uh, to allow this to proceed. Um, if I can answer one question that we've not addressed, the building that was there before and that uh, Julie has addressed uh, in paragraph other conditions C, one C. Strategy for removal of accessory structure near court near the place. Uh, that was an original building that was built by the Johnsons as part of their farm property. Right now, it's interior storage for construction materials rather than having outside subject to elements or subject to theft or whatever it may be. That it's more subtly in the building. That that building will be removed, uh, and that's that's at least the explanation. Right. I think we all understand that. But what's asked is when, how. Um, you know, it's been there now for, you tell me, you know, 15 yeah. years since people have been living on the Build, site. When is Building 5 planned, building, right? Yeah, we just, we just completed this building 4 this year and Building 5. These two are the next two to be constructed. They've been staked out. We've got building permits for these two. And then... Did you check the stakes? Pardon? Did you check the stakes? Check the stakes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. You missed the last one by five feet. We're not. No. Okay. It's hyperbole, <laughs> but you you misplaced the other foundation, so I have the right to to joke about it if I want to now. Okay. You missed it by a lot. It's not like a foot. Anyways. Yes. In the back. That just brings up a question. I don't know if it's appropriate for me to ask. I'm sorry. What's your name? I'm Ann Gray, and I live at 21, uh, 28 Johnson Woods Drive. The buildings <clears throat> that they're going to start building are right next to our house, and they were moved closer. I was just wondering, has any water mitigation plans been looked at? Because it's uphill from our house, they changed the orientation where it's now moved closer, and I'm concerned that water is going to go smack down into our house um, from that hill. I would and I just you, don't know who's responsible. There was a complete recreation plan. Submitted to engineering? Yes, yeah, so engineering would have seen those plans, I think. Okay, because I went down there and they hadn't seen them. So, anyway. We've got a building permit with everything that we've submitted. It, it, it's just a concern. Okay. I don't want to just get off track, but yeah. um, I don't know, just ask engineering to look at, mm -hmm. make sure the grading's right. So, um, rem which one was your name? Johnson was that. We're also the property that has a problem with the potential for our house. Yes, so right in our house. No. So, we have a house here and a garage here. Well, at least two of them of our house. I believe I actually saw the foundation plan for those units right next to yours, mm -hmm. and I think it's actually slightly it's further good. away. Okay, because I have a thing I got from Mr. Moore that shows it's closer. Okay. okay. So maybe I'll come talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. It's haunted these two. I mean, we know those houses are being built there. I just want to make sure somebody has taken into account that it's uphill and water is going to run right smack down into our house. Water's been an issue. Can I make a <clears throat> My name is Tim Davidson. I live at Ten White Oaks. So I'm right next to the two properties that I'm talking about. And we've been there since May, so I've had to look at this hole in the ground since May. Um, I didn't buy the property to look at a hole in the ground. I bought the property to be part of the community. And the longer this goes on, you know, there's got to be some resolution to it. I don't know how we could hold it hostage. Um, 
reference other you know things that should be a, in my opinion it should be a standalone. Um, I have to look at it every single day, and I don't think I should have to look at it you know for a longer period of time. If the other party agrees that the landscaping would take care of the situation, I think it should move forward. And um, but it's also affecting the ability for that middle section for our landscaping to be completed because it's a construction zone. So we're held hostage as a homeowner until this gets resolved as well for our area to be completed. Okay. Aren't you looking out at the barn? No, no, no. It's right there over here. Okay. I'm um, over on White Oak, so we're right next door. We're fairly. 51. We're building 51. 51. Right there. And what was your name again, sorry? Jim Davidson. Uh, oh, so again, our landscaping can't be complete. And we have dirt and dust and kind of wind blows. First world problem. Uh, so if the garage applicant were to prepare a letter like this with 11 signatures on it, Mr. Moore would approve the location. That's that's asked for. You know, in actuality, Mr. Chairman, if in fact Mr. Hannon hadn't objected, if you ask yourself the question, I bet you would have approved this. It was Mr. Hannon had objected, rightfully so. Uh, and we understood the circumstances weren't the best under which the Building 52 came before you. You could see that point. Uh, but we're, we're not trying to get a vote by plurality. We're trying to show you the way the neighbors feel. You just heard a comment from the butter who was impacted by it not being completed. So it seems to me if for the people who are affected by Building 52, allowing it to be completed is the best thing to have happen. Clearly, an issue with the garage is going to be resolved privately. None of the plans you approve show any garage from the very beginning. This is an add-on, and that should be handled by resolution, I think, between the parties first, and then coming back before you. Um, I, I do agree with that. I mean, we don't have a plan submitted. Uh, we've never seen had a plan. I mean, we had the markup, the, the architectural detail, but we really never had a plan, you know, asking um, for for that garage or a change um, that garage um, or showing that location. Um, so there really isn't something that we should be hanging anything else up on. Uh, although, um, I guess uh, uh, my message, and you know, maybe I'm not on the board in the future, but I've been here for way too long now, um, is I'm not all that um, likely to approve another five foot here or five foot there until you get. Um, get a whole comprehensive thing and that if that whole comprehensive change I, mean, I, I right we all know that he's going to come back and there's going to be a shift of one of these buildings 10 feet here or 10 feet there like we're Understand. done with that like whole thing right I agree I mean it, it shouldn't be this this one building this um, foundation I, I don't even know why it's taken a year and yeah. a half 18 months yeah yeah I, that's insane for, for it to, to take that long to resolve um, and and um, it, it shouldn't I can make one suggestion um, maybe that sort of a meet in the middle so construction can continue maybe the conditions on page four that start with prior to the issuance of a building permit could be changed to prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy so that at least those units can be constructed and landscaping completed. That's a good suggestion. I agree. <clears throat> Do you just want to write in what the strategy is for 1C? May I ask when it's appropriate? I'd like to weigh in. Sure. We're sort of informal here tonight anyways. We didn't really open it for the public moment, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So just I trying to get this off my plate. I completely empathize with your um, situation and have had <laughs> the situation that I've had is 
um, this is the going asset that purchased the property, which is now eight years ago. Um, so I completely understand what it means to wait. Um, and I hope that my earlier um, walkthrough of all the options that we have agreed to um, would have been acceptable in some way. They represent considerable um, a considerable concession, um, given the amount of money we paid for the second garage. My understanding is that since uh, there, since you wrote the first draft decision, you connected the two items. Mr. Moore was completely aware of this, as were these gentlemen, and it's it's really shocking to me that the that even the draft decision and the recommendations and the direction that you have given in multiple meetings explain what Mr. Weston has explained, that you are tired of the piecemeal fashion um, and request, and that the garage is a known, um, a known, currently known, it's been known for years, many years prior to this. Mr. Moore has never gone to the commission planning commission and asked for approval. So, uh, you know, all throughout this conversation, which has gone over a year, um, the draft decision has been there with the conditions on it, and that has not been enough motivation for Mr. Moore to agree to any of the locations um, that we've discussed, not to mention the years prior to it. So, I, well, I understand your position very well. Um, I, I certainly can't take responsibility for the fact that this has taken um, a year for Mr. Moore to resolve the position with Mr. Haney. I mean, that's his own situation to finally get to this point. It's completely separate from my issue. The Planning Commission, I believe, in their wisdom, understanding that Mr. Moore was unlikely to come to a resolution or propose a location, which I would agree with since he had never done it before or during this conversation, the conversation he had at the Planning Commission. Um, it's just, it, and it was not motivated to have hardest conversations to resolve it. Even with, you know, the understanding and the, I would say, um, direction that you have provided these gentlemen as well as more. So I mean, it's not like those those conditions are brand new to us. Um, it, they've been there throughout the process. Mm -hmm. I, I do want to say that um, you know, there was a good faith effort made. The plan you have for the single family and the single garage was something specifically designed to try to accommodate this issue. We spent a significant amount of time surveying and engineering and grading the plan that we resubmitted to the CBDC for their consideration in front of the per unit, which would be basically the closest proximity to be able to try to satisfy the original condition. Where the original one was laid out didn't physically didn't work. And you know, when you actually have to put it in and make it work. That was what we had come up with to engineer that without, you know, in, if you remember correctly, through it from the rear of that unit, there's a significant slope mm -hmm. down to where units uh, That's four understood, but are. You, you're kidding me if you're telling me that somebody who pays this much for a unit would want that garage place like that. Any of the other units. Nobody has a, a, a freestanding garage adjacent to their buildings. No, I understand. This is a unique condition. Yeah. But the quality of this development would preclude you from placing that anywhere else on site in a similar fashion. Well, we had it, we had it designed so it would be the least obtrusive to, to the abattis as well as make it more useful for her. So, I mean, I, I just, just take an exception to the fact that we haven't tried. So we tried. So, uh, okay, so let me ask you a question. Building number five, hold on. Yes. Um, what's the plan for that? Is that three units, four units? It is three units. And each one of those has a garage? They do. So a second, a single garage? Is that the, the, the <coughs> is that what happens? A single, um, single Someone wide? Someone up with a, a wider garage. I don't know what the physical makeup of the original was. 
So just wondering if there's a plan for remote garages for that building as well. No. Additional garages. No. Unless Ted makes agreements with potential buyers for buildings that haven't been approved. I think we could also review where the stakes were, which um, which made it, I think, very clear that that application would be incredibly, I mean, it blocked my entire front window. It is directly on my front walk. It's practically on my front walk as I walk into the building. So the light to my home would be gone, not to mention, um, not to mention the trees that would have to come down and such to put it where it was recommended. So um, I think we, I'm happy to, to ask if you could pull it up so that we could review it if you would, if you would like. But I think everyone agreed that that location was not. Uh, it was a awkward location. Yeah. Um, so why would there be an objection to Julie's language, right? Mm -hmm. And actually, her revised language, which allows you to go forward, um, would mean that you could come forward with a plan that showed several acceptable locations to Mr. Moore that then continued the negotiations with the homeowner. So I'm approving it tonight, <clears throat> but requiring that he come forward by a certain date with. Before a CO can be prior part of the CO. certificate of occupancy for either unit at six to eight White Oaks. And what what is it? Can't agree. I mean, you've got two <laughs> levels. You have private parties agreeing where it's supposed to be, and then you have to approve it. But what if the parties can't agree? So you're going to resolve it at some I point. I no, I mean, you need this our our courts going to tell them what to do. I mean, yeah, this okay. Is <laughs> But that's that's yeah. Exactly yeah. That's a res that's a resolution, right? That's what you get paid to do. And that's is, what that's is, what we're saying is, is, is resolve it. It has. I mean, it, we're saying we don't want to keep doing this, and we want this to be resolved. So you're saying it's never going to be resolved, and we're saying resolve it. No, no. I'm, I'm just saying that the parties have to agree first with that derived. Yep. That's fine. Yep. And tell this, and, and like that backwards. has to happen to this move is forward. No, no, no. No. It, no. I guess what I was getting at was that if tomorrow you agree to a location, you would have that plan tomorrow, right? And so your CO would, wouldn't be held up, but wouldn't be held up at all. If you start pressing along, and you get close to that certificate of occupancy date, you could propose several locations that are acceptable. Maybe you haven't finalized it. That's Maybe not what the, then get your CO. it says. It says no, but the garage I'm, I'm, has to be built in a, in a, in a building permit. That's I'm talking about condition, condition number one. one. We can do, we're changing talking about we changing talk about condition, condition number, number one. two yeah. after. In my experience, and I'm you know, in terms of reading um, the amount of time that it's taken to resolve the matter with Mr. Haney, the fact that there was absolutely no motion um, for the seven years prior to coming in front of the commission, I think it's, um, I think Mr. Moore has proven an ability to continue using continuances ad nauseum. And, um, I, each time that the draft decision was, um, you know, contingencies were taken off the plate, um, it, it has proven to give Mr. Moore more leeway to continue the process at Nazca. That's not correct. So I, I think, Mr. Latham, you are interrupting me. All the Mr. Latham. Well, I just have to correct what you're saying. You're I think you can't correct me well. You can correct me after as much as you would like. But I would please like to Just direct all your comments to the board. It would be easier. I would like to continue with my comment rather than be corrected in the middle. OK. Five so I just think there's been an utter disregard for the commission's um, authority and direction, which has been consistent throughout the process. And um, uh, it seems completely reasonable to me. I don't know what sufficient motivation is for Mr. Moore, but it seems completely, um, it seems necessary to provide as much motivation as possible to resolve issues um, that involve this particular um, development and 
I mean, this is the issue outside of me. I've watched Parade for quite a bit of time, and I've been in the game multiple times longer than that. So um, it is a game, but I so appreciate. Um, I think you've experienced those things. I don't think that's unique to me. These individuals, or to Mr. Haney. So I ask you to consider that as you consider the decision. The idea of making it go until the occupancy, the permit, the you guys have to explain it to me. The permit of occupancy is that certificate of occupancy. That one um, only gives Mr. Moore significantly, significantly more leeway to prolong this conversation. When you ask for it, you know, in the second meeting that we have regarding it. I mean, not having a CLO could make it hard to sell the unit if it's not already sold. And if it is sold, and that attorney isn't paying attention. Take it just qualifies that kind of situation. We, we applied for Building 52. Obviously, it's a term that was not properly located. We have not been writing up. We had extensive negotiations with Mr. Hannah. It was productive. It ended up with a resolution in that regard. There's been no motivation to write this up. <coughs> this has been laying there with, with the foundation for a building suit. So I just have to correct that fact if you're trying to be uh, doing Mr. Mark, it doesn't right. fit. fit, fit. We, we don't know motivations, and we shouldn't be um, uh, projecting what we think any motivations are. The fact is that it took 18, um, uh, 18 months to come to resolution to put a couple of shrubs in the ground. I mean, in extended fence. I mean, really, that's what that's what happened. 18 months. So we also don't know if there was some other negotiation. Yeah, there. Yeah, we don't. But um, so that's what we know. That's those are the facts that we know. We don't know motivations at all. Um, but I think that's. Um, I, I, I'm, Somewhat irrelevant. Um, so we just I know that it's taken my for. Is very inappropriate. I'm, I'm not usually in front of a planning commission. And I don't have the, the rules. Um, I apologize. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, Julie, you've got some other highlighted language in here. Yeah. Um, for these. So I have another condition that's like. The condition number three on page three, that where the highlight is, it's not an enforceable condition by any stretch of the imagination, but I just thought it might make someone more alert, more vigilant if they came across it. Mr. Chairman? Mm -hmm. Hold on. Okay. Uh, that certainly makes sense. Uh, the resale, though, the, we can't control what people do between themselves and the sale and the purchase. It certainly is to a sale of a new unit requiring that the updated current site plan be provided to logical and is not objected to. I guess your goal here is that nobody's surprised by something, either um, an unbuilt structure that they're, they think they're buying or an adjacent planned structure. Yeah. Obviously, once, yeah, I know that's an ideal. once everything's constructed, they can see it. Right. So I would, with the resale of a unit, there still could be, there still could be uh, planned buildings that caused this again, right? Oh, definitely, I mean. Right, but there's there's nothing in their control or our control that right. that anyone's bound to with the resale of a unit. When are the no when are the butters notified? I assume everybody in this development is in a butter to anything going well, on they're in not the development. Necessarily notified of every sale. They're not? No, when changes happen. No, when, oh, when changes well, happen. Well, I mean. If I have any say over it, anytime they do anything, the entire neighborhood's going to find out. So, 
That's what we did in this case. <laughs> but that comes back to us, right? So then we have right. to be aware of it. We are the ones who issue the notices. They don't do it. What do you mean? Well, um, I'm just trying to think of all the possible scenarios, but somebody buys an existing unit, a re resale, right? Mm -hmm. And there is a proposed building across the street that no one can see yet because it's just grass. Mm -hmm. um, how are they made aware of that before they purchase their building? If you take away the word resale. They might not be. I mean, and I don't think we can necessarily account for that. Mm, that's a buyer beware kind of situation anyway. Mm -hmm. I agree. So you really don't I mean, they know they're moving into a, a larger development. They're, they're not buying a lot, they're buying a unit. Yeah, but, uh, but so. they're, buying, they're buying a building in a development that's in construction, and yet mm -hmm. people who are buying buildings in that, un in that area are still complaining about construction activities. Right, exactly. But the one that come up in front of us are usually those which are changes to what the plan is, which is what we added. But they don't get notified by that unless we do it. Well, right. unless, unless they see a structure. Once we become aware of it, further the road. and we decide it's worthy of a conversation with the commission, then we notify everyone who lives at Johnson Woods. <laughs> I would say take off the resale. I mean, I don't think we can yeah. account for yeah. that. Yeah. We would take off the resale. So, so we just drop the resale. Yeah. Some instruction for that. What's this? If you have another comment here, though, on the uh, conditions related to 5152. Yeah, see. Can you have some concerns on the driveway? I wasn't sure if you had, um, can you show the plan? I wasn't sure if that conversation got resolved. We had changed the circular driveway to like a pulling driveway with a turn off and we had a conversation about it many, many months ago. Yeah, yeah. I remember it right now. Yeah, it still doesn't work very um, well, but. So I just didn't want to s assume that was a done. Is that driveway serving two units? Yeah. Yeah, the, the driveway isn't gonna work, but. not work very well. It's going to create problems between those two neighbors, but that's buyer beware. I, I hate saying that, but it's not a reason enough to, to make them take the foundation out. Oh, I wouldn't take the foundation. You know, I mean, there's just there's no other way to resolve resolve those those conflicts. Um, so All right. I'd never plan it that way, but. So then, um, I'll just make a note that you, you approve the proposed changes to the driveways. Mm. <laughs> or just not say anything. <laughs> Do not object. Yeah. Do not object. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's get to this final condition here. Yeah. Um, did we agree that we thought the issue, um, changing it to issue of CLO was a better situation here? I guess it's both of these would then be prior to. Right. So that's not really possible. Probably. I mean, it, I mean, it, it definitely could be, but um, if, if they, you know, decide to get right on it, but. Um. Well, what motivation does he have to move quickly? This is this is the leverage that you guys have. I mean, I, I, I'm not necessarily interested in requiring that it be built. No, I didn't think we were. We're just um, so, which is item, which is condition two. Mm -hmm. um, I, what 
what I want to know is that there is a plan for where it goes so that everything else that's built can be in the right place or not, or the issue can be resolved, that there isn't going to be a, a, a garage or whatever the answer is. Um, there needs to be a, an answer so that we don't end up with cascading issues, which is what's happening, um, which is what happened here. So uh, I don't necessarily want to condition the construction of it by just yeah. The, yeah. The, the planning of it. I don't think we were doing yeah. that. I thought we were just going to say that they agree. have to come forward with a plan that shows where it's going to go, a real yeah. plan. Yes. Uh, Let's take out number two. Yeah. Okay. And you're going to change number one, though, to be our certificate of occupancy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's within our... It gives it a, a stick with the plan, you know, there needs to be a plan in place, but it doesn't like it's attempt to completely resolve it through it. Through this. And if he wants to put forward a plan saying there's no garage, then you can do that and you guys can fight it out from there too. The the um, draft decision that we will um, uh, vote on is whether there's uh, is um, to require before um, building the units at six eight. <coughs> White Oaks Lane, which is right building before occupied. 52. I mean, before before those buildings become occupied, they need to provide a plan that shows um, all the changes in that part of the development, which would include um, which would include uh, uh, the yeah. garage, and it would include whatever else that he hinted at. Um, in one of the meetings that he had plans on shifting things um, some, and it would include um, uh, taking down you know the plan for taking down that existing structure and if anything else is going there in its place so but well, we see that though he just has to state that I think right we see building five is proposed and it's pretty much in that location we understand that I've always understood that to be a, a construction building is it um, is it possible to, or maybe it happens, is the plan for the garage approved before the certificate of occupancy? Location. The for location. the, right, the location and the other items that you requested in the... Right, so that would be before a certificate of occupancy would be issued for either unit at 68 White Oaks Lane. That, and that it be approved. Um, well, not just not that I understand that you can't. I see what be, you're saying, but so if he provides you with a, if he provides you with all the things similar to the location in my front yard, if he provides you with all those things and considers that he has he's checked the box. Yeah, I don't think I it think it says to be here. an acceptable plan, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, which should be acceptable, acceptable to all parties. Okay. I thought that's what it said. Hold on, yeah. read this. Yeah, it says acceptable to one. It says the garage needs to be shown in a proposed visible location that's acceptable to you. Um, and we discussed that, I, I remember, in the minutes when I asked the question about the disposable room, we discussed that as acceptable to um, to Mr. Moore and myself. Is that acceptable to whom? To the CPDC? Well, it says to the, the for as written, it says acceptable to the owner of 162. Well, that well so do you guys want it submitted so I mean if the, the, well right it says that this comprehensive plan of changes will need to be approved by you guys it, so it will need to be submitted to you guys yes so the question is how far down that process do we go before well, issuing the CFO how far down that road I thought that that this language allows for several locations to be selected that are acceptable to both, right? This is before they even do any any serious engineering, so that 
let's say they find three locations that are acceptable. And then when you get into it, you find, for example, in the one that you started to work on in front of a house, that the grading is just, you know, it's really too difficult to deal with without some giant retaining wall in the back end there. Um, and that knocks one off, but the other two are still viable. From a planning standpoint. If there standpoint, was any surveying done around that original location that they, that they originally offered, there was, they, I think the work that Mr. Bergeron was referring to was the location in my front yard. Yeah, that's what I was referring to as oh, well. I that, that um, was the original location that he marked on the December 11th, the first meeting of the commission on December 11th, which he said, which I agreed to, and Mr. Moore. Was that number two, the across the street? Yeah. yeah, no, that's the original one. location, yeah. which is here. The original location, which was, this was the agreed upon location. Oh, wait, I don't there. know if there's been there's like some utility infrastructure engineering there. around this location. Yes. You have? Yeah. There's a transformer or a power um, something. Have, documentation to prove I don't have garage plans. We've done the plans for building five. Right, but you haven't done significant, you haven't looked at this location from an engineering point of view. We, you, the only one you looked at was we one detail, of my front yard. We detail in great detail in front of your house all the way to the right of the house. Probably not but, where that garage is. But. Well, that's fine. So if you, if you. Anyways, I was just really getting. I think to the point where you could probably pick several was, locations. This requires an application the, for a minor amendment to be submitted to you by showing all contemplated changes. It requires architectural plans and elevations for the garage. It requires a plan showing any ripple effects associated with the proposed garage, um, how it will impact other buildings uh, and uh, natural features and things like that. Do you also want to approve this application for a minor amendment before CFO is issued? Or is it just good enough that it be submitted and maybe the first conversation happens? You, if they just agree, can I just ask one thing? Sure. When we do all of these, you know, we they may be Ted in her, she may end up with something that's, day. I'm sorry may end up with accepting a location and then we come to the CBDC and the unit owner that's adjacent to that says, but I don't want that next to me. That, that's exactly the starting point. it all over again. Th that, you know what? That is exactly the point. Mm -hmm. That is the point. Mm -hmm. And may I point out that so we do a minor modification and we notify everybody no, to develop it again and have a hearing and then we, it, it, it just ends up not being resolved. So, I mean, it puts... It, it's not being resolved because Mr. Moore doesn't want it to be resolved. I, I understand, but you can understand. Because if he was motivated to do it, and we tried to find some leverage on that, we're also trying to be reasonable to Mr. Moore by, I, by trying to find a way to approve that foundation that you misplaced. That took you 18 months to plant some trees. That's your resolution, by the way. You lawyers are making a killing on this. 18 months to plant some trees. You could have done that on day one. Day one, you could have said, we'll plant 50 trees right here, and we would have been done with them. But you didn't want to. Okay? So you wasted my time, you wasted the board time, and now we're going to waste some of your time. So this is a reasonable way to plan for some buildings here now. You're going to have to put some literally some stakes in the ground. You're going to have to figure out where this is going to go with some intent, not just, oh, maybe here, maybe there. Have a meeting, figure out where it can go, meet with the neighbors if you have to. Uh, I mean, you have to resolve this and get this off of my table. So can, can you explain what that, how that condition is to be worded, how it's going to work? I, I think the issue of what stage does it have to be at to get a CFO is really what I'm curious about. Okay. Um, well, so this is what I foresee happening. They submit the application. For the minor mod. You maybe just have a meeting or so, and then if it doesn't say submitted and approved, then technically they submitted it, so yeah. they've met the condition, and then they just continue that hearing forever and ever and ever and ever. That's what your concern is. Right, that's yeah. my concern. So, maybe you need to approve. So, um, if that's open, yep. if that's open, then nothing else can come before it. No other buildings. That's not true. That, this doesn't say that. I'm saying to say that. <laughs> okay. We're going to start taking these things in order. Okay. If they open that meeting, 
and we need to resolve that before any other construction sure so that they don't just open it and continue right because he's obviously not willing to pay all kinds of engineering and attorney fees this is a as you know, this is a large project that's gone through very many different iterations. I realize it takes a lot of your time, but that's the way these go. The PPDs are, are amended periodically, especially when someone cares about the end product, what it looks like, saving trees and so forth. I'm hearing a process where one situation on a garage that is a personal private dispute between parties can stop this entire project. If they cannot get any more building permits for the site, I'm really troubled where that's going. I understand yeah. what you're saying, but admittedly, we've been working with this site for many, many years, and we've been very, very accommodating to Mr. Moore's uh, fluid design. For the better of the development, I think, for the most part anyways. But we've always been accommodating to all of his changes. So don't say that yes. we stopped it on day one. We're stopping it on day seven years later, whatever it is. No more. Well, I'm you know what I'm getting so, but, but it's like even not it's not even stopping it because yeah, it is. Uh, no because all we're saying is resolve the thing have a conversation figure out it's a it's a it's a garage my gosh it's the tiniest building it will be the smallest building on this entire site and you're telling me that the whole thing is going to stop because uh what's it a, a 20 by 24 foot building you can't figure out where to put it if that if that if this garage stops the the rest of the um the development it should be stopped you're, you're, come you're giving, on you're giving one individual the control no what, what? no we aren't giving he, mr moore's in control well, he is absolutely in control. It, it, yeah, I hear it's going to, there are going to be two parties have to agree for the garage, for this to move forward, but to occupy this property, to occupy the new building 52. And then maybe to do anything further building beyond that, I think I've heard, they also have to agree. Wait, two parties no. have to agree? You've got 11 parties to agree to the, the change in 52. Right. So you can't get two parties to agree on the one garage? They, they haven't been able to, well, and they've been talking. Think, well, there's been no motivation here. Very flexible. She's, she's even willing to take the space that she's parking in now. <laughs> the garage is already built. built. Yeah, that's a little yeah. odd yeah. to me that they didn't accept that one off. I, I guess I'm told by it becoming a public event when it's a private you contract. It's going to be resolved between the parties. <laughs> We, you, it doesn't need to be a public event. You can come. To, I'd prefer it if you come and say this is this is what we worked out. Here's where it's going to be. It's not a public event. This is the new plan. So We've right just like you did with Mr. Hanny, right? We're going to plant some trees. He, he agreed. He signed off. No no public event. We, he's not here. Done. I don't, that's the way I want it. We don't want to take. We don't want to spend. I don't even know how many hours we spent on this. Right? Yeah. Over the past 18 months. Yeah. We've got the conditions about the reason, you know, that there's no CO until, uh, until it's resolved. Never mind. It's not going to work. You could have three plans that look like the sketches that you submitted for the other garage that are proposed locations that, I don't know, maybe you have to negotiate with a neighbor or there's some other issue that isn't quite fully resolved, but the locations Many are acceptable. Loca the locations that I propose, the only location that has um, that has a neighbor is Mrs. Lake on number two. All of the others do not currently have um, do not currently have neighbors. I spe you know we specifically look for you know they, there are buildings around them, but they are not buildings that are um, occupied. So we tried Why to wasn't location number two acceptable to Mr. Moore? Um, he, I, I'm not sure why it wasn't acceptable to him. It's going to be in the front um, of the house that's going. It's going to be in the front of the house. There's 15 feet, um, there's 15 feet oh. available. There's 15 feet between the units, so. Yeah, but putting that between the see that. houses on the plan. Yeah. Um, there, I think there's another this drawing one. which shows the, the other drawing that I have. That's what she's talking about. I think this, oh, that's the one we have. Sorry. Mm -hmm. 
my other drawing. Do you have that one? It's not a large building. This one? No, this one. This one that I submitted with the most recent yeah, we letter, have the that. October. Great. Do you think this is workable? Site layout map. There. This just needs to say um, to approve. I, that's, oh, yeah. that's odd. Hold on. I said, yeah, she'll submit and see if you see she'll approve. Oh, so this one doesn't show if you approve. She's Jane. Um, Jane. Julie's saying it here. It would say, right. and CPDC will. Yeah, so unfortunately this one doesn't also doesn't show, but I have it here in the larger and this is Jean Latham's right and these um, this is the plan for building number 62 61 and 60 again this is mine I recommended that it be placed here not in front of any of those buildings um, but between the 15 feet that's that would exist between these that exists between these two the proposed building as well mm -hmm. as mrs latham's um kind of yeah it's a lot tighter looking i guess we all get used to looking at it a certain way but do you know <coughs> that's why i was yeah, trying to get over here so there's, a, there's a building to where the arrow is yeah, I'm looking at the, what's happening is that the, um, it's it's this one plan I had open didn't have a building. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. If you, so, where's my house? It's yeah. It was just a simple question. Oh, I wasn't sure why Mr. Moore okay. didn't want right. I don't see the other building on this plan. That's so why that's, I asked. Right. Okay. And that aerial shows an open field, so I wasn't okay. sure. That's right. That's what I was going to say. It struck you are going to require that there be an application before you or garage before one can occupy the building 52 units. Can it be also provided that the applicant will sit all, if we have not agreed on a location, will submit three locations acceptable so that you then decide which three? I just don't want to have a one individual control what's happening here, and that's what we have. One other individual. One other individual, obviously. So if, if, if we can't agree with the, the, the person who wants to grow up, um, My name's Mary Beth Cannon. Then, then basically let us submit three alternative locations that would be acceptable and you decide. You want us to adjudicate? That's what's coming to Well, what's I think that I pointed out <laughs> <laughs> the locations that are acceptable to me. Well, that's no, that, that's the problem. See, it, that holds up the, the development for what you want, and it's got to be something that they. If, if you can't agree oh, with Ted, we can do that. If you and he don't agree, I've never been in a conversation with Ted where yeah, I said yeah, anything that's unacceptable. I, I, I have not had any okay. conversation. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I want to say that we're so the whole. I've been very grateful. That's true. So, if all three of them were, we would approve a site. Based on how it fits in with the with the rest of the neighborhood, yeah. and, you know, obviously with turning radiuses and um, grading and things like I think, that. Yeah. I think he yeah. should propose locations, and then you decide which one is acceptable if the parties can't agree. If the parties can't agree, but I would prefer right. that the party agree. I think I've shown that I'm very yeah. possible. I would narrow it yeah. down to three. I don't like X, by the way. I'm sorry. I'll I think do that, that again. Um, no, X, uh, the one you had marked as X. Yes. Y. You don't like the one uh, that's in front of the building that's in front I just, think that, uh, uh, I just think that a single building floating out there, once they put building five yeah. in, would look so odd. So these, there are two here, the X, and then the other little garage. And what's the distance from your home? Oh, that's another one. It's um, a long way. You know, she's it's already significant. there. It's a second garage. I mean, it's still significant, so it doesn't represent the value. Um, no. But I'm trying to be accommodating. So um, I was thinking under number one, B1, I could say a survey plan showing a proposed feasible location acceptable to the owner of 162 Johnson Woods Drive or three locations proposed by the applicant. 
for the one car detached garage. Blah, blah, blah. With all dimensions and setbacks indicated, all existing and proposed grading shown, and all utilities delineated. Because those are things you're yeah. going to need to know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay I'm, I'm just, I want to make sure that if you say or three locations proposed by the developer, that means either or. Yeah, so, yeah. so I, I mean, it's not, it's either it's a proposed me. acceptable location to both parties. So what or if he just picks, what if he picks, what if Mr. Moore picks three locations that are, you know, Chelsea? Because <laughs> I don't put that past him. I was just, I'm trying to figure out a. <laughs> Yeah. No, you're right. It might not even be in Reading. Can't we just say up to three locations? <laughs> well, up, can we stipulate the distance from the home? No. We don't know all of the implications about this. I mean, if she's willing to accept the, the garage at the entrance, then that's the distance she's willing to accept. Oh. Sorry if I say she, but <laughs> the applicant. Oh, not um, the applicant. The, uh, the aggrieved. <laughs> <laughs> no. One of the many. Yes. Agreed. Sure, it's a much longer yeah. list. Than so, so what are we gonna? What are we gonna say? How about if we just write um, <laughs> well, are we submitting and approving? Because yeah, let's go back up to the top here where it says submit. Is it going to be submit and the CPDC will approve? I think approve? Submit, submit, yeah, and, and the CPDC shall approve an application for a minor amendment. Okay, so what if... Um, and if that, if we're telling you right now that approval could include three different locations. Up to, you know, you know five locations, if you guys really agree to yeah. five locations. That yeah, gives there's all the flexibility you want. Is that going to be a minor modification that you can deal with by making it a condition of this that we don't have to notify? everybody all over again. I don't know about that. What do you think? I can't imagine that you find locations that don't have uh, some, like some sort of impact to some other well, homeowner that should know about it. Yeah. And the longer the time goes on, you know, the, the more, I mean, when this was originally discussed and um, agreed upon, it was seven or eight years ago. So now there's a lot, there's you know, a lot of things are off the table because because people have purchased um, condominiums. So um, again, the locations that that John and I agreed to, the only one that has an abutter is Mrs. Latham in number two. Uh, not that you're insignificant at all. I understand, you know. Um, and all of the others um, don't don't have a butters um, that we suggested. I, I thought that we had, I thought that there had been engineering around number, number one. plan showing. How about we just change it to a surveyed plan showing proposed feasible locations, right? So then they can submit two, three, ten, fifty. And are we leaving the acceptable to the owner? I think that she has to buy into it to some extent. Right. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous to say he's going to give her the But she's proven that she's not the yeah. one who's like yeah. rejecting yeah. ideas. Yeah. I see that. Right. So yeah. she probably won't. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. As long as they're not ridiculous locations. I think well, if he came yes. back with, for example, <laughs> this is not going to happen, but if he came back with location number one, and um, the homeowner said no, then she's not going to do that. But if she said no, we felt that was the best location from a planning standpoint, we could just say that's where it's going, or that's where it would go. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. You suggested to Mr. Moore and his team that that location is not acceptable. They then submitted it officially with the documentation that he requested. So it, it isn't out of the realm of possibility that could happen. He's not going to waste, because he can't make you waste time. Yeah, probably. Maybe. But we have a CFO yeah. hinging on that, at right. least getting this thing started right. reasonably, right? right. And yeah. approved. So um, I'm Are there okay. any conditions yeah. around the solution with Mr. King and the uh, I had, I did have some in here. Um, uh, at the very top of page four, 
there's a condition um, that prior to the issuance of the C of O for either unit at 68 White Oaks Lane, they need to have completed landscaping and screening. Or potentially we could have it bonded if like the season isn't right. So there aren't dates. There aren't, there's not a hard and fast date. It's before the next particular action. That unit was sold or did they um, back out? Did they, back, did they back I'm sure out? I couldn't. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. The, the, I was originally sold. I'm not sure that the original buyer is still going to be buying that, that unit. <coughs> so they, they would finish it. And we're coming up on the season. I don't think construction for that unit takes more than at least a shell for two months, three months. Yeah, how long do you think before? Depending on how bad the snow is. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Moore has multiple, multiple, you know, multiple um, construction projects in um, in motion as we speak. So I don't know if there's, you know, any need for him to be concerned about this one small area. I don't know if we have Mr. Hayes here. I don't know if there was um, anything about about dates. I'm involved or if it's still no, I think we've resolved all the issues here. So are you guys okay with that condition related to? Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. That's basically to finish up the landscaping out around there before they come in for their um, occupancy permit. Yep. Right. Um, but the, yeah, so there's no specific time frame, but it's prior to the certificate of occupancy. And then that motivates them to finish up the landscaping outside that you were concerned about, <laughs> Holly's were concerned about. So all the rest. Saying, uh, Davidson, well, sorry. This, this. Well, around well, the, around the new unit. Right. Oh, but no. we have no idea when he will build that unit. It right. or, mm -hmm. So there, or the need for the. It's not up this summer. Yeah. <laughs> or the need for the. Um, That's silly. Okay. Motion to approve. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay, so is everyone clear on the language here? Mm -hmm. Get a motion yeah. to approve the. Uh, any other comments, Mr. Latham? Well, could, could we. Could someone read to us what that language is? I'm sorry. To <laughs> sure. Um, do, you, do you want me to read it? Yeah. So, the, um, under other conditions on page four, number one. Prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy for either unit at 6 to 8 White Oaks Lane, the developer shall submit and the CPDC shall approve an application for a minor amendment to the PUD special permit that includes the following. A, an overall plan depicting all contemplated slash proposed modifications to the site that the CPDC has not yet approved, as well as specific plans for each contemplated slash proposed modification that show resulting setbacks to other structures, modifications to parking, changes to natural features, etc. Failure to submit such a plan may result in the denial of future requests for modifications. B, 162 Johnson Woods Drive Garage, um, number one. A surveyed plan showing proposed feasible locations acceptable to the owner of 162 Johnson Woods Drive for the one car detached garage that was included in the 2011 purchase and sale agreement for the unit at 162 Johnson Woods Drive with all dimensions and setbacks indicated, all existing proposed grading shown and all utilities delineated. And, um, sorry. Two, architectural plans and elevations of the proposed garage. And three, a plan showing any ripple effects associated with the proposed garage, such as changes to the locations of other buildings, removal of trees, modifications to site grading, etc. C, a strategy for the removal or approval of the accessory structure in your courtyard place that has never received approval or a permit and was not shown on the original plan. I thought there was going to be a submission by the developer of a plan that had three alternative locations. And That's a surveyed well. plan showing possible feasible locations. I took away the three because if you guys agree to two of them. But is that, I thought I heard a separate paragraph from 162 that again went back to the point that the owner of 162 has to approve before for us to move forward with occupancy. Feasible was defined earlier on in this conversation yeah. as mutually agreeable. 
I, 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 yeah, I didn't feel yeah. it was read, and I thought if it weren't agreed, then I thought that we would submit to you alternatives and you decide. I do, I do think that if we strike the acceptable to the owner of 162 Johnson Woods Drive um, and just leave it a surveyed plan showing proposed feasible locations that um, works in the condition that they can't come to an agreement on a specific or any specific site, if we don't see that one of the sites is feasible, like the site that we already reviewed in, in Concluded that it wasn't feasible, then that's not going to be an acceptable right. plan that that's we're going to approve. Yeah, that's true. Right. Um, you guys can determine if they're feasible or not. Right. And then if they're not, you can throw them out and say, give us new ones. Yeah. To, yes. Right. So it doesn't have, you can submit three locations that are not acceptable to me. Uh, I he think could accelerate the hearing. Yes. We would understand that they weren't <laughs> acceptable. Pardon me? If they were on the other side of Johnson Woods altogether, this board would probably say these are not acceptable. These are not feasible. Right. Okay, I just didn't yeah. um, I, I have, does that allow I you to not proceed with the language that said that the developer submits three alternatives. As and you're not going to hear three. It oh, says a I surveyed plan showing proposed feasible locations. For the garage? Yes. For the one car detached garage that was included in the. So that allows you to. So that's, that's separate and apart from an agreement. If we don't have an agreement, that would kick in. That is what is part of the um, of the um, application for a minor amendment. So certainly, if you have an agreement, if you come to an agreement and there's one, then you're going to submit to us a plan with one okay. um, uh, feasible alternative, we have feasible location, and we may approve it, we may not, but chances are we, chances are we, we would. Um, if it doesn't impact all sorts of other things. Um, so if they it's up to you. The parties can agree, and then what then happens? How do, how do they get a CMO? How do, what do they have to submit to you? Would the developer then submit to you plans of proposed locations? You're, you, you're going to submit. You're, it doesn't. I, I, right. It doesn't matter whether you, whether the two parties come to agreement. Okay. That's not what our job is. Okay. Right. Our job is to identify um, a, a site plan that has feasible locations. Um, in it, we may take into account in that assessment of whether it's feasible, of whether it's. You know, two miles away, right? That's not. That's probably not feasible. Um, I, the, she may be. Um, she. I'm sorry. <laughs> may be accepting of things that we're we wouldn't necessarily consider feasible, and that may sway our our um, what we think is feasible. If you all came to agreement on on that, meaning like this, the the building that's already built. And, and um, that's, what, that's what Julie read that language that, that provides for that. I, I didn't hear that. Over Overall plan depicting a, uh, um, a survey plan showing proposed feasible locations. That's all that needs to be said. That's our burden to submit that. Yeah. Yeah. Read upon great if it's not. Then and we approve it. So if you're if it's not feasible, if we don't think it's feasible, we're not going to approve it. Okay. Right. Understood. <laughs> and the CBO can issue at what stage? Uh, after the plan showing the all the contemplated chan changes and the proposed feasible locations um, is approved by this commission. The landscape. Yeah, th these all those things I read. We're fairly up to date on the plan, though the overall plan. You are. Right? Yeah. So then, there really are very few changes to deal with. The, the last change that there were, were when we did the zoning change to allow us to push those units back. And that was the last change, but the plans were never updated right after that, though, I think, because we yes, had discussions are. about it. They updated every year. You get a, we you submitted get a those. I thought we had discussions since this started about what was current or not. So you may have submitted them. They may, I don't know if we clean them, right? Because if this is going to be going on for... I don't have any. I mean, hey, well, they right. recently got a foundation permit for a slight shift to one of the buildings. It was very slight. Feet. And it didn't like reorient it or like shift it forward and backward and create like a wall for an abutting unit. It was very, very small. At least that was my take okay. on it and the building right. commissioners. So. Okay. 
Uh, sure. Can neighbors be notified when the proposed garage will go? I mean, did that get decided? Yeah. That's a minor amendment. We, yeah, so we could just do the same thing we did for this one and notify the whole. Sure. Yeah. I mean, sure. 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 I've been coming for the last year <laughs> to every single meeting wondering if the garage is going to be proposed in front of my house. And so if I know that you're going to notify me if that's the proposal, then I know that that's the meeting that comes in. And step every time. <laughs> And you can also subscribe to the agendas so that you can see. Yeah. And that, but yes, I mean, but sometimes I, they don't talk about these They don't talk about these. Right. Yeah. That's correct. Um, but yes, I imagine we would notify the whole neighborhood again. Yeah. Okay. Is there a motion? <laughs> motion to close the public hearing? Do you have any comments? Uh, all in favor? Closing the public hearing. Okay. I'm going to get a motion to approve the minor amendment to PUD special permit for uh, Johnson Woods. Let's see. Johnson Woods PUD special permit minor amendment for White Oaks Lane Foundation as amended. So moved. All in favor? Thanks, I Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. See you soon. <laughs> or not. <laughs> I really can't think of anywhere I'd rather be. <laughs> 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 Did Tony Say actually, hi. like, recuse himself? Mm -hmm. <laughs> John Smith. There you go. Yeah. He's probably at least. I just, yeah. First floor problems, as my kids would say. Oh, it is. <laughs> okay. But this is the world we live in. So. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we do. Um, was this Mary Beth? You have everything, right? You have copies of everything? Yeah. Uh, oh. Thank you. Um, I thought we'd lost well, you. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> you more to war next, right? <laughs> It's a nice little nap. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Um. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you for yours. Thanks. Sign um, permit, minor amendment. Uh, CRE is 258 to 62 Main Street. continued to February 11th at the request of the applicant. Do we have to make a motion on that? Um, probably you should, yeah. Okay. Uh, I move that the... The public hearing for 258, 262 Main Street, Reading, Discovery Ventures, uh, be continued to February 11th, 2019 at 8:15. Uh, 8:02. Let's do. Put 7:30 for. Yeah, maybe we can. Two. Maybe 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Second. Okay. All in favor? So all that's left is minutes. <laughs> minutes and guidelines. So Julie did some work. Not guidelines, guidelines, zoning amendments. Sorry. Oh, um, that's okay. I'm looking at the Potential zoning amendments. I did start to I did start to work on the guidelines, but I um finished Oh, well, I did more work on the zoning battle amendments. Can we do the um, 1210 minutes? Um, I have to excuse myself. So. Okay. 1210 minutes? Do you have comments on that one? No, I just because I was you there. Did that. Yeah. Oh. Does anyone have comments on that one? Yeah. No, 14 times I read it while out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one I missed. Feels like a long time ago. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Right now, it's only meeting once a month, so. 
Motion to approve the um, meeting minutes of December 10th, 2018. All in favor? Oh, sorry. Okay. All right, thank you. Thanks. See you guys in February. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I won't be as distracted, I promise. Don't make promises, you can't keep them. <laughs> no, I cannot because this time I'm trying to finish all my stuff. So do you want to, right. you want to quickly go over this, uh, the zoning bylaw? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Or do you want to do the October minutes real quick? Let's see this one. Um, sure. Yes. Tony, did you invest your time in? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I read this. As I recall, didn't Mr. Tuttle find several uh, corrections in it, and that's why it's late? Uh, um, Pam had pointed out a word that I remembered correcting, and so we d discovered that the one you were reviewing was not the one that I had edited, so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You are reviewing the one I edited now. Oh. Page two, um, bullet point number six. There's a reference to a row of six inch trees. Is that six inch diameter or is it six feet? It's probably six inch caliper or DBH. Yeah. Um, uh, probably caliper. It's usually caliper. It's yeah, conservation commission requires CDH, but okay. uh, typically so it's, it's caliber. Okay. It's not a conservation plan. Okay. Fifty inch beach. It's really a fifty inch diameter tree, huh? That's mm -hmm. good. to approve the minutes of um, October 1st, 2018. Second. All in favor? Right. So, should we review some of the zoning things? I guess I can recap um, since Nick wasn't here last time. We talked about a number of things for November 2019 town meeting, um, and it was kind of the, the ones that kind of came out were um, as priorities. Most of the top as priorities were um, a quick fix to the um, lot shape definition to account for lots on a cul-de-sac bulb, which came up with a 40 grove. I, I believe it was 40 grove mm -hmm. subdivision project. Um, and then um, another thing which um, 
You guys aren't ever involved in because it's a buy right situation, but it happens at the counter with the building commissioner is footnote one to the table of uses. Um, I read that. Creates a lot of challenges for for us. Um, <clears throat> but so reading town council's analysis of this, mm -hmm. I thought that what they were saying was very clear. So I guess I was confused why. It's Why it's the um, I think what what becomes confusing is the amount to which um, developers would want to modify the structure, and then the question is always asked like whether the footnote still pertains to the structure. Um, okay. It seemed like there's a lot of creative clear, things that. that come up, and then the other challenge is. They want to add on to it to make two, you know, today size units, yep. and then it's really not looking like a single family, and they have to hide the back, the other door, and it's all this gymnastics that has to happen, um, and it's not necessarily in keeping with the intent, which was to preserve the older housing stock, um, older maybe lowercase historic, look, lowercase lower h historic um, housing stock. So I know that the bylaw doesn't explicitly state what the intent of it is, but that's what the town council's interpretation of the intent is, and what people who worked for the town for a decent amount of time remember it as being the intent um, is not to just add, you know, a few thousand square feet to a structure and then divide it and create two units and change the character of the um, And then we have. Developers seeing what another developer's done down the street with a house and finding another house and coming in with like a similar floor plan, um, but bigger or slightly different, or they're going to take out three of the four walls and then move it off the foundation and then and then they're going to redo the floor and then it's like, well, what if the original structure is still left and at that point does this footnote still apply? Um, and so there's just a lot of back and forth with the building commissioner and, and developers and town council's gotten to the point where it feels like it's a lawsuit waiting to happen and we probably should abolish it all together. Um, and the alternative would well, be to provide we, a ton of clarification. Of well, how do we protect, if we take away the footnote, they're saying that, what, that that's not allowed anymore? You can't make it into a two family? Right. So and that, so it's currently, um, if it's proven that the structure existed prior to 1942 and has had eight habitable rooms at that time, it can be converted, um, and that's a buy right thing. So it won't getting rid of the note doesn't get rid of it doesn't render a bunch of things like non-conforming necessarily because they they would have been done under the footnote in a buy right fashion, um, and it just would since it seems that we're deviating from the intent of the bylaw in the footnote as it was originally um, envisioned, it's not clear that we necessarily need to keep it. I guess I didn't read it that way. I, I read it and I agreed with their interpretation because that's how I interpreted it. Um, you know, the, those eight rooms are what you can use essentially make this two family and then we allow some additions and alterations and um, rec in recognition of the fact that um, times have changed and space needs are different maybe we don't need a two family <laughs> did you ever think of that you know like maybe we don't need the two family then if they can't make it work within the structure that was there then that's too bad well, so, I mean, if we wanted to put language exactly, <laughs> exactly like that, then that would take away a lot of this, but. Yeah, I mean, but, but how right. are they getting four pages of interpretation from that footnote if it's so unclear? What do you mean? No, so the, the four pages of this is because we had one understanding, and we went forward with one building permit, and then someone comes in with something that's like, wait a second, this is an, a new way of looking at it, and the building commissioner doesn't feel comfortable. And so then we ask for another interpretation or a little more, like, 
definition of how we should look at the word alteration. And so then it just it kind of got it's gotten added on to, <laughs> added on to with every new thing okay. that's come. Well, obviously not going to um, solve it tonight, but I, you're you're telling me that the, deleting the footnote resolves all these issues. It just takes away this possibility for people. Um, the only issue I would have with deleting the footnote is if the footnote is gone, does a converted to family, which according to this um, interpretation now says, well, if you raise it, you can't build a second two family. You can only build a single family. Does that now, because they had a two family, does that now allow them to raise and rebuild a two family? Or should there be something in there that says any two family that was built under this bylaw may not be raised? Um, no, I don't think we could say that a building can never be demolished. Um, but a building that's converted under this footnote mm -hmm. becomes a by right two family. And my understanding is that the rights to that two family continue with property. Within the limits of what that two family was, though, right? I it's not a non conforming. It. It's not a non conforming. Right. But he said you couldn't mix. So if it's a non conforming structure, what are, what are you? I thought he said that if a two family dwelling has been converted, this cannot be extended or altered. Okay. That's it's not a non It's right. It can't be extended or altered as a non conforming use because it's not a non conforming use. That doesn't mean you couldn't tear it down. He's saying if he's saying that we don't look at this as a non-conforming use because it's done as a by right condition under the built under the zoning bylaw. Okay, so you can't extend it as a non-conforming use. If you tear it down, it has to meet today's setbacks. Right, it would even have though it would to be a two-family conforming. Well, to well today's that's zoning. what the interpretation said. Was I thought. Um, if they were to tear it down, they would they would lose the 1942. It's no longer so 1942 if, building. if it's a single family and they tear it down, then they no longer have the right to, to convert it to a two family because it Correct. no longer exists. If they create it as a two family, it's a two family by right, and I believe they continue to have the rights to a two family on that. Right, if the two the, families create, but the trick there was to convert it to a two family, then knock it down and build something and bigger. And build a bigger two family. Two family. Uh, yeah. But I thought he said here that you could do that. Okay. He says. Yeah, that's so not what he says. As a result, if the two-family dwelling was properly converted under for no one and is subsequently raised, then the property owner can construct only a new single-family dwelling. As well, so I guess we have to talk about time and history, right? Because I think he was res responding to a developer that wanted to do exactly that. Convert it as it was yeah, to a two to very cheaply to a sure. two-family and then knock it down like... I don't know, later. 10 days yeah. later, and construct, like we had a proposal before us for that scenario. Yeah. I don't know about how how historically, like if if in 2018 someone converted a single family to a two family under this footnote, we abolish the footnote 50 years from now. The, 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 yeah. the problem, the, right, the problem with that is, is that. Right, you have then this patchwork of of well there's a two family <laughs> there's a two family and it's not it's conforming and who's going to remember that right. that was a two con uh, you know in this in the zone that um that that's that's um doesn't allow two families that that one's partic that's a conforming use right no one's going to remember that because it's this little oddball thing that the footnote disappeared. Right. Right. So. So it's right. These are all good questions. Okay. Um, this is a good one to take up, I think. It's going to require it's a, some discussion. It's a mess. But there's intent here that's clear, I think. Right. The intent you was. You and that Dave. But both want this is clear. The intent is clear. The intent Interpreting is this clear. is clear. Well, isn't it? I mean, let's simplify it. Um, the intent was that you could take this existing structure. 
that looks like a, a one-family home, because it is fairly small, and convert it to a two-family. Now we're saying that those two, that two-family doesn't conform to today's standard, which I don't know what that is, but we need a lot more smaller stuff. <laughs> we do. No, we do. Yeah, we need exactly. a lot more stuff. Yeah. Right? right. There, were, there was a report today about how unaffordable the housing is to millennials and stuff like that. We need starter homes. We don't need apartments for everything. We need smaller stuff. So why can't this two-family starter home be something that we strive for? It was intended because homes were smaller back then. So this is great. There's this little two-family that somebody buys and they can afford to live there because they can rent out the second floor. Right. You know, why so does it have to be a McMansion? Should we just add language that L limits they have the to work with, with what's there? Well, th this is just my interpretation. Yeah. Yeah. I understand this to mean that you could do these little two families, mm -hmm. you know, within these constraints because it didn't impact the neighborhood that much, right? It's unlikely to have uh, eight people living in each unit or something like that. You know what I mean? It's probably like maybe singles or couples and you know, just starters. Right? So the neighborhood doesn't lose the sort of structure that it had. Right. I think that is the intent. And I think that's what I'm saying. So the right. intent to me was obvious, but we have to have a discussion and see how the, the town feels about it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I would be okay with that, putting in language like you suggested. I think, so I think we either need to try to stick to the original intent or just get rid of it altogether. Um, uh, my concern is if we get rid of it, it's that we take thing. away the protection that the original intent created. Either no two families are allowed, which is fine with me, you know, because it's a single family um, or it's a very limited, well, there's, there's, um, you know, pre-existing non-conforming two families and, well, fa and, and three families, and, the, and so, so it is the trick of like which ones are considered <clears throat> pre-existing non-conforming, and and if they are demolished and two years goes by, they <coughs> lose, lose the rights to that, or which ones are we're done with the footnote and therefore they have the rights to the to the use. You know, I mean, it's. We have to discuss it, but I mean, the scam of converting it and quickly demolishing it to build something bigger. Right, and that something. is not, like, that's not all that. And that's, right. you know, that was presented to us. I mean, there's been so many different so that was things. The problem. Needham ran into it, and lovely little capes were all knocked down with mansions on a postage stamp size lot. So you pretty much were out of market. You could afford this right. big mansions right. anymore. Mm -hmm. So further conversation about this? Do you want me to propose some language? Yeah, I think everyone should look through this one. And, and, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And we'll try to... I think it's a good one to take out, especially if you're probably going to have a lot of issues with it. Um, I would think the first thing you'd want to do is specifically uh, specify exactly how much addition can be built. Say the first floor area cannot increase more than 15%. Well, so we had, and we had said for one iteration that um, at least 50% of each of the resulting two units had to be in the original structure. So they could add on, but it couldn't be. Yeah, in excess of 50. So basically, you could double the size of the house at that point. We were just trying to. That's a big, that could be a large yeah. expansion. Right, and then it like have it look like a single. I don't know how you hide it. Um, and then with like the garages and all that, and it's just. Well, that's accessory part issue, right? No, they were garages. Oh, you mean just garages? garages. Yeah, real garages. Yeah, because they're garages. Yeah. Everyone's going to have a garage. And like. If you do this, if you use this footnote and create a two-family, you, you can't do an accessory apartment as well. So accessory apartments are only for single-family, single-family lots. So, okay. No, I'm fine with that too. That was the intent there. Yeah. November for that one. November for all of them. I mean, that should be enough time to resolve that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have to be ready in uh, September? Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay. Um, we have to do hearings in July. 
language to town council in August. Warrant closing <laughs> in September. When nobody's here, can we do them sooner? I, we could do them sooner. I say we target something a little sooner than that. Yeah. June. June. Maybe, maybe early June before okay. it disappears. I know some people don't show up, but sometimes we catch on a topic that fascinates people and they do show up and get some response. What's on the agenda for February that she said was a crowded? We have, it's not a crowded I did. I, I misunderstood no. that. Okay. No. We have a subdivision, a two-lot mm -hmm. subdivision. Oh, sorry, a six-lot six subdivision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was oh, thinking wow. about What's the one that... that? Howard Street. That's going to be the biggest thing I've seen come through here in mm -hmm. 10 years. We had a six-lot subdivision a couple years ago. No, which one? Um, no, not Lyle. Um, um, not, and what, not Veterans. Um, Lynetta Lane, Barton Estates, off of Franklin Street. Six? Did it go through? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with a trail. They even gave us, they even donated some land to the town in the back. Remember this? <laughs> <laughs> you sing off of Franklin? Between um, um, the one source of P, Pearl, and Averill. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Averill. Six? And right across from Wood End Cemetery. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. that was okay. six? I think that was six. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. All right. And then. Um, I think enough to be called the States. It's its own name, right? Yeah. <laughs> no magic in those houses. Which one? Which one? Um. So then we talked about looking at the zoning on South Main Street. Um, because there's a lot of challenges with redeveloping the lots. Um, and I went through kind of like what some of the challenges are. And the discussion was about. Um, doing some surgical fixes to the zoning bylaw to kind of clean up some strange things that Pam's during you know, um, development and then potentially looking into an overlay district as well. So I started working on the surgical fixes and I sent it around today. I know you guys probably didn't get a chance to look at it. Um, but we can go through it right now if you want. And a lot of it's, um, there's some proposed language and then there's just some, um, I just point out some sort of inconsistencies or things that I think we should think about. Um, mostly related to actually um, the fact that we allow multifamily in business A, but then we make it very hard to actually develop multifamily in business A. And I don't know if that's intentional um, because I know we don't want the entire town to be entirely residential. Um, but so, so the, we need to kind of try to strike a balance, I think, between allowing it in the viable kind of way um, and then ending up with a South Main Street that's entirely multifamily residential, so some kind of middle ground. Um, do you want to pull that? Um, do we have a minimum size? So should we switch? Let's switch. Um, just easier. So it's the, um, I think, seven page document today that you guys have in front of you. Um, you want to just start from the top? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so the first statement I noticed, and this is not really related to anything else, but I think, think it's a little bit misleading under Section 6, under right under intensity regulations, because it doesn't account for the fact that you can get relief from certain things. Um, so I was thinking you might want to reword, reword it. When you say relief, are you referring to um, Variances or special permits? Both. Like right here, um, it, these statements are very definitive, um, but that's not actually the case. So it is possible to get variances and special permits but for non-conforming conditions. Isn't it implied in the entire zoning code that where something says you are not allowed to do this, that you could, you could attempt a variance? I just think this language, if we're going to look at this section, 
may, um, could be a little clearer. I also think that conflating uses and structures in the two sentences isn't really very clear either. I think it's a good idea. Um, so, I can propose some. I'm with you on that. I'm yeah. on that. Okay. And then um, the lot shape changes that I mentioned. Well, I don't want to say pretty straightforward because then will be something that we're missing. Do you think that is, I'm going to say it's as simple as that, is precluding, um, precluding uh, those requirements when it's on a cul-de-sac bulb? Or yeah, so I think that because of A, because, because of the statement in A, B on a cul-de-sac, can work and you without getting like crazy like I don't know if you guys have seen um, is it Stonewell Road or like the lot there's a couple um, uh, subdivisions in town where the lots like the frontage is like this tiny little strip that goes all the way around the bulb they're, they're a little wonky but I think because of the A we can allow in certain circumstances angles and 45 degrees um, And we won't end up with crazy shape. Well, when you say less than 45, so I need to draw this because. Or you less than. The maybe it needs to be less than 90. You get your bowl. Yeah. So when you say less than 45, are you talking that? Or are you talking. The this angle or this angle? The one that's less than 45. No. You, but one of the angles is going to be less than 45 five. because you've got two, you've got a two lots that you're you're playing right. with that border, right? right. So, so I'm, you're, I'm just making sure that you don't want a ton of little ones. You know. Right. Um. I'm just thinking that at some point you're going to end up with somebody saying, okay, here's my, here's my cul-de-sac, and I'll go way out here, and by the time I get to the house, I'm good. No, it's because of A. Each lot shall have, in addition to the required frontage, the required minimum lot width at yeah. all points okay, between so all the points. required so frontage and here, the nearest point on the here. front wall. And so you can never go in, is what you're saying? Well, you could do that, yeah. Can't do the opposite. Can't do the opposite. Can't go this way. Okay. Um, that that's for districts where the lot width is specified. So there's there are some districts where the minimum lot width is not specified, and that gets a little bit more complicated. Um, let's see what districts those are. I don't know about. Um, The, if the frontage is on a curve, because um, pretty much every kind well, it, yeah, I'm going to say probably 50% of frontage could be on a curve. Oh, okay. A curve, you know, a one degree, a half a degree curve, um, which really is not the intent, right? So, um, I could see people getting working that a little bit, so we right? Because the intent there was, I remember seeing those where you just can't, because you need to work around the the bulb, mm -hmm. you can't get forty five degrees off of that bulb, right. and then you, you just can't do that. Yeah. Um, and then the the reason I put curve in there was to account for like what, not a cul de sac, but like some if there's some. Yeah. Like a road but that's like just curving. Yeah. yeah. It maybe it needs to be more specified, yeah. like yeah. the radius or something. Oh. Or or should we just say curve out? Most streets have some curve to them. So. Right. Although the streets typically have a curve, but the property the property lines are are generally right. I don't know. 
more often than not, they're they're straight lines. So how's the right of way work on the roadway? That just right off the center line of the roadway doesn't just follow the roadway. So if these um, station points are on a curve or something, yeah, just follow. Yeah. Them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Sometimes, right? Sometimes it's sometimes it's it's their their angles. Yeah. Well, cul-de-sac certainly works there. Whether a curve works or whether it needs a little more definition, something to consider. And so, um, the solution to uh, the second part, which is minimum lot with not specified, is we could have it say, um, minimum the minimum frontage needs to be maintained all the way back to building line to avoid getting like a crazy um so which what districts yeah so that would only be so the three single family districts have lot width specified um And then A40 and A80, uh, I mean this, A40 and A80 do not, um, and business A does not, or B or C, or industrial. And then depending on what use you're doing, some have a required frontage and some don't. So. Well, my first thought is um, Do we want to make it easy to create cul-de-sacs in anything but um, um, residential, but residential districts? Um. And, and before you answer that, aside from this, so I know you just noticed it. That, was there something that we did in the past year or two that created this problem? What problem? I mean, the fact that in, in some cases you really just can't comply with this. Just that 40 group. What's that? Just that subdivision that, um, the 40 group subdivision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's never come up before. Um, and well. I guess my, my question, I, I'm sorry. Did we change? Did we change this language under six two one recently? Yeah, remember, just like two years ago, because it used to be a, like this mathematical. Oh yeah, 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 yes, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so in the last two years, we have had a number of subdivisions with Forty Grove. What what really mattered was they were saying we have a by right subdivision that we don't need any waivers for it complies with everything yeah and then was it tony i always give you credit Probably. for pointing out <laughs> um somebody brought up oh. what about lot shape yeah and then jack sullivan amended the plan to make it matte to make it yeah but so th it's possible that some of the other subdivisions um mm, yeah had a little bit of a less than 45 degree angle here and there but they weren't trying to claim that Right. They had right. a right. Wasn't the confusion there that lot shape didn't apply to an existing site? That was only the building commissioner years. never in the past um, applied it to existing lots. He only applied it to new lots. Right. And and that was um, I mean, most people coming into the counter weren't aware of how to even apply their lot to right. that geometric or non-geometric kind of, I don't even remember what the equation was, some 22 times 63 times the circumference of the, 
perimeter of the lot divided by its random. So we made it a little bit more geometrically intuitive, at least. What was the point you were trying to make? Um, is that, do, you know, uh, residential districts, right, they're oftentimes they're trying to fit little smaller parcels, right? You're trying to do different things with them, and, and which is fine. Um, uh, I, I'm not so sure we want to make it easy to do those same types of um, um, things in the business districts to create new lots, new convoluted lots. Or, well, right, um, so in the business districts where... Um, or in A40 and A80, A80 have to be some pretty big um, yeah. parcels anyways, right? Well, right, and I then guess. also in um, business districts, depending on the use, you might not even have a frontage, so you don't need to build a road to create frontage. So what I'm really getting at is, is there an issue? Is there really an issue there for minimum lot width not specified that we have to solve? Only if it were, um, I think not an issue has not come up, no. Um, that doesn't mean it won't. R right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean the A40, We don't need to solve it right now, but that's what I guess that's that's my question is: Are we trying to solve something that we a might not even want to solve for that particular component? So should we should I should we take it out or just leave it unless said frontage is on a cul-de-sac bulb and just leave it at that? Yeah, I guess that's what I was okay. thinking. Okay, and I'm taking out the words or curve. We can continue. We, we need to think about the curve part of it. Yeah. Okay, let's move along. Okay. Going on to page two. Um, maybe we need to back up and have like a bigger conversation about um, multifamily in business A what the goal would be. Currently, right now, it's a permitted use. Um, but nobody's done it. It's, um, well, I can outline some of the reasons why I think we haven't seen much of it. Um, going down to the table um, on page three, under multifamily dwelling, under business A, um, We require a 40,000 square foot lot um, for multifamily. The average lot size along business A corridor is 27,000 square feet. Um, then we also have a um, lots in two districts provision, which excludes multifamily from the zoning line extension. So we have Business A, which goes down South Main Street and splits most of those lots. Mm -hmm. And it, you might, if, even if you do have a 40,000 square foot lot and only part of it's in Business A, you can't extend the line. So you're stuck with um, anything related to that multifamily use, including parking, being within that including narrow the strip. Parking. That's the way that it reads. It, 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 that's the way I believe it reads. Um, applies to any lot. Um, 
that shall not apply to any lot. If that 40,000 square foot lot is cut in half, so 20,000 square feet is eligible for the whatever the, the, the structure plus the infrastructure for that. You can't extend that zone line. At no, all. but you can take credit for the entire 40,000 square feet. Right, so you would You're have a, to do a lot that could, but then you'd just have to <clears throat> squeeze it in. And then you'd also have to comply with the setbacks of a 30 foot side yard setback, 30 foot rear yard setback, uh, 15 foot front yard, and then keep it in within 25% lot coverage and under 40 feet. You just can't get there. It's just, I don't think. Also, with also with like land values, it doesn't seem like it would be possible to acquire if you needed to accumulate lots to get 4,000 square feet to start with, and then you can only get however many units you can fit into that tiny box. Um, well, I would think the 25 percent is the real killer here. Mm -hmm. You're looking at only 10. If you've got your 40,000 square feet, you're only looking at 10,000 square feet for a house. If they're 2,500, you maximum you get is four units. Right. Not to mention, like, fitting everything else onto that site. And if you have that zone extension issue, that you're fitting out right. the, uh, only a portion of your site. Um, yeah, I hear what you're saying. We could sit there and try to figure out, you know, how to make it more accommodating to that particular use. But I, I'm not excited about that. Nor am I. Right, so we don't want the whole town to be right. multifamily housing. So that's the, but maybe we could end up with some more viable or more interesting or better mixed use. Mixed use. Yes. Yeah. Right. It, but it, and so getting up. Yeah. Can we explore that? Because you've mm -hmm. a number of times you've said, um, not today, but sort of over the past few months, that um, that you consider. Um, um, mixed to, uh, us to be able to use, mm -hmm. um, or someone to be able to build mixed use using um, the housing. Right. So because we allow multifamily housing and we also allow commercial, and we don't have a clause in the bylaw that says that you can't have multiple principal uses in one building, um, we don't expressly permit mixed use though. So. That's something I, I had a note in here. Um, in my, under my general notes, such as. Um, so, so, I'm sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you um, while you look. So from that though, I would say that, um, that the most restrictive like table of use or whatever then would apply if you have a mixed, if you have a mixed use structure, right? What are you saying? If you're trying to build something, mm -hmm. right, and you're oh, trying right, to the, use, right, you're, you're, yeah, that's you're combining the, the you, that the restriction is the one that's the most right. restrictive. Right? Absolutely, yes. Um, and I guess I, I wouldn't, I, um, although I wouldn't be in favor of encouraging more. Um, residential, only residential use in um, uh, business A, uh, I think mixed use is a different story. Um, right. Because it's, to me, the way I view that is it's sort of a bonus, right? Because without it, we're only getting the f a one story development, first floor development. That seems to be the intent sometimes, yeah. But yeah, there's some and, sites that are and scaled, then, right? That, that have the right grading where you could do, you could really service both, you know, in mixed use. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, so then I was thinking, like, well, I mean, you, you can read what all my, yeah. my thoughts are here. Um, Well, There's you're right there. It, these, this language is restrictive for that particular use, but maybe we don't want to fix that. Maybe we just want to come up with a better product, the language for a better product. Well, right, or maybe specify, have more specifics around the commercial aspect of it, and then anything they can do additional. It's bonus or housing or whatever is, but at least we get the commercial that we want. Um, I don't know, I 
there's a few ways to go about it. Okay. Most of the notes that I put, for, you know, for conversation, conversation's sake. We should probably do a GIS exercise, right? Bring up these logs, see which ones are split, how big they really are, what the potential is for combinations, understand the grading. And we started to do this a few years back. I told you I was going to look for those, that exercise. And I, I know I, I saw the folder when I was looking at my, um, my backup drive recently. I just didn't go into it. The, um, many of them are split, I believe. Yeah. And I wouldn't be in favor of pushing back, you know, into those, um, into those sort of neighborhood fringes with structure, but, you know, maybe parking could fit back there if it's graded, protected properly. You know, pushing the, we always want to push the buildings towards the street anyways. Right. Um... On that note, I do have to say, just even having that one building, um, which is not the... It seems close. It, which is not going to be a fantastically beautiful building, but, um, <laughs> but but having that close up to the, um, the, the roadway on South Main really does start to change the feel of some. Mm -hmm. The one went, that went in with where Pizza World was supposed to go, which yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. it's imposing. Yeah, they didn't do anything with that. We just gave them a sort of sketch, and they just kind of threw it back at us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that I think that massing will be good. I'm not commenting on the building, but the massing um, might actually even start to slow cars down, and it just feels a little bit more. Um, uh, beginning of a little community, um, you know, sense that you're not driving out through an open field part. Yeah. So do you want to talk about these things more? Um, I mean, that with the table, I just point out a few, um, just a few comments about Maybe we could reduce the front setback and get buildings to be closer to the street, which would give some more room behind. Um, having a side setback that's 30 feet, it doesn't necessarily, you know, the lots are kind of already shallow and long, and um, they, on the sides they abut other business uses. It's probably the rear setback that's most important from a protecting abutters standpoint. So the 30 foot side yard setback might be, you know, not really achieving anything. At one point, we had talked about, and I don't know how you really do this, but whether you know, if you're abutting next to another, uh, up next to another um, commercial use, whether you know, those structures are closer together, you minimize, you you reduce that side yard setback so they could be close together, um, and then you open up the openings between the two two buildings so it's not like these 60 foot you know 60 foot openings but a little bit wider and maybe some sh maybe if it makes parking better because you have bigger gaps to do loading and parking and stuff um, but there but by doing that again here your your um, what you're allowed to do on your property depends on what your neighbor does which is what I, I necessarily like to do but right well maybe incentivize people say that you'll reduce the side setback if you share parking lots or provide access between them yeah Because wouldn't that be great if there was access between 
the, a connection between the Starbucks parking lot and the Fantasia, Fantasia building. building parking lot. Mm, I was just mm -hmm. on there. Fantasia yeah, building. Both of those locations. I'm glad you reminded me. I was what? blinded by those lights on the way home. Didn't I told you that you last time? Yes. Told, and then like I never drive home at night. So do I have to shoot them out or are you guys going to fix it? <laughs> <laughs> there's shoot them no out. way they meet code. No. <laughs> They're casting light pro several properties away. Yeah. <laughs> it's like as soon as you pass by like the mobile oh, station or oh. something that right in your eye. I'll drive home that way tonight. Perfect. <laughs> I like literally never drive. But you have to come the other direction. There, it's got to be. You have to be coming up. north on Main Street. Oh. That post is at 40, 50 feet high. <laughs> I can't see it coming south. You can't see it coming south. I mean, I'm sure you can see it, but it's not the same. Uh, <laughs> not the same effect. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. I'm sorry to distract this. Okay. <laughs> you know, they can cap those kinds of things. They shouldn't be that high. They don't need to light the top of their building. They're trying to just put the two fixtures in and do the whole parking lot. It's not, they're not okay. supposed to shed light in right. their property yeah. line. Um, okay. And then uh, I pointed out that the third foot rear yard setback is, is good for the abutters, but it is, for some reason, we have a more stringent rear yard setback for a multifamily building than we do for like other permitted commercial uses on the lot, um, hotels. So, you know, we're protecting residents from other residents, but not from like a noxious commercial use. Um, or not as much as we are yeah. for, it's just a little, I'm not really sure if that makes sense. Um, and, and similarly, <laughs> we allow less height, a building of lower height that's multifamily, um, it's the lowest height um, of any building in business A. Um, only by a few feet, but, you know, what's the thinking? I think the thinking was that hotels and motels have this front service area, you know, this pull-off. They might need more space in front, if I remember the discussion correctly. And less, hotel, less in the back. You're talking about yeah, the Yeah, like you, okay. you park in the back, but you yeah. have to pull into the front to, mm -hmm. to get to around. Room. And that's something, by the way, we want to keep thinking about. If we're going to reduce the front setback, we eliminate possibility of having any kind of function out there. Like well, we could have like a zero to, you know, or like a clause where waivers can be granted by this board for the right design, which yeah. I think is probably a good idea, which no, I made I a, which I made a note about. Like, we want to promote creativity and yeah. some different ideas. You just, you just can't be too close to the roadway. It's not going to slow down. And like, there will be a site plan review for any of this stuff. So these things could be negotiated in that process. Sure. Um, and then I, de I agree with Tony that the lot coverage is probably the biggest killer. Um, which again is the least amount of lot coverage for any use in business A. Um, it just seems that the plan was to minimize multifamily, allow it, but really discourage it. Right, and so I think there's a better way if, you know, a better way to achieve that. Um. Now, it looks like they were looking for three or maybe four story buildings. Yeah, as compact as possible. I mean, we're, we're in, this, in essence, it's not happening because it's not economically viable at all with all these restrictions. Very true. However, um, apparently, you know, we, we're being told by developers that four and five story buildings aren't economically viable for them sometimes. Yes. Right. <laughs> but a four or five story, a four story building on 25% of a 20,000 square foot lot and like where do you put the parking? And what I'm saying is I wouldn't uh, necessarily Say that, I guess. Venture. I wouldn't just destroy whatever protection we do have for that back edge because we want to give a developer, you know, his maximum. Oh, I'm not suggesting destroying the back edge at all. If you read my yeah, no, no. If I'm, you read my it's notes, it's not just the back edge. I guess 
like I said, we've got apartment developments that have come in here and gone lot to lot line, right? Five stories high and told us they can't do that economically. Um, so, no, right, no, I... You know, so right. we might as well set it up the way we want to, and right. if they can't build it, then it doesn't get built. But I think we could set it up the way we want it better. Okay. Like, right now, it just seems like... I mean, I, I guess it's working. Like, if we don't want multifamily, it's, it's working because we're not getting it. It's working because, uh, like John and I said but, before, I think mixed use is the right answer here. So, right, but I'm saying we're not even getting mixed use. use. Right, so let's fix it so that right. mixed use is better to do. Right. Yeah. I think we need to make the, the multifamily piece a little bit more viable. Yeah, um, mixed use. As, right. Yes. <laughs> The multifamily component of the mixed use, right? Or multiple principal use, is whatever, whatever's. What well, we could specify like. that housing has to come with commercial. I mean, this is our commercial corridor. Mm -hmm. We could specify that. I would say that you'd want to specify a percentage of the gross floor area dedicated to commercial. Right. I actually have a note about that. Mm -hmm. Exactly that with some <coughs> math. Um, yeah, you said that. On the, on the rear yard and even the side yard stuff, um, you know, we're jumping to the conclusion that um, that with distance comes protection, protection. Right. and um, in in the in the distances we're talking about especially when we're talking about a commercial core uh, you know commercial uses I, I don't think that's the case at all right distance doesn't necessarily mean mitigation to your to your um, right to your abutter right um, so if we're if we're looking at this maybe that's something that we want to think a little bit better about um, you know maybe the maybe the distances are reduced but with stringent requirements about fencing and mm -hmm. um, and other buffering so that comment and Tony's comment if you go to page two at the top um, we have some strict requirements about um, gross floor area dedicated to multifamily and percentage of lot area dedicated to landscaping. I think they're um, kind of, the landscaping one, I'm not sure, gets us really what we want. Um, and the gross floor area maybe could be flipped and actually specified for commercial, and then whatever's left can be residential, and then that will guarantee us at least a decent commercial presence we don't specify far it's just sort of calculated somehow it's i mean it's a roundabout way of far gross floor area um, yeah but it's 0.4 right that's an far of 0.4 Like food for thought. Yeah, yeah um, we have to continue stuff. all of these. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. right. Yeah, good. But I, I think the getting all of the GIS plans for the strip we're talking about. Are we talking about from Washington Street to to um, South, or some other summer to South? Where are we talking? Yeah, there's this section of Business A, and then there's this section. 
And and there's also another uh, piece of business aid. Where home goods is. Yeah, that we can't forget about. So any changes, we either have to separate the districts or make sure the changes we propose don't, you know, work up here as well. Um, I can't believe that no one, right, that's a new owner. There's a new owner there if they come. I mean, is there any And they interest? also own, like, um, this one, too, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's another little piece I think going right here. If oh. there's anything ripe for development, I would say that home goods property. <laughs> yeah. I think there's some wetlands. Well, I mean, the, um, the old cows and harrows property is pretty good. It's two properties, but it's still a pretty good site. Yeah, yeah. The grade change to the back is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, you know, for separating the uses. Yeah. You have your commercial strip right mm -hmm. in front, and the rear could service the entire residential. You know, above it. It's on your room. And then, yeah, and then the property that's down here. I mean, the new cows really only work because of the zoning change we made to the business B piece. The Say that again? The new Calarisos required a zoning change to a portion in the back corner, I think, or yes. a portion of it was in a different zone. There's an overlay, a PUDB overlay. Yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's something we had to change there to make that work. Yeah. Um. There's not many lots like that. No. 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 So maybe we could just be more deliberate about what kind of... I think there's few enough lots where we can look at each one for an impact so that we don't miss something. And, you know, if, if one is impacted more than another, but it's not overly detrimental, then maybe that's worth the change, let's say. You know, like... 90% of them were great, one of them is just so-so, then maybe that change is worth doing. Whatever that is. Okay. Right, rather than just say it's blanket, 30 foot setback. Mm -hmm. Right, I think that's why having a clause that it's, like, that the waivers are an option. Yeah. Because, like, right now, any option. deviation would, you know, require it. But we should at least investigate what those are, because... Right. Be a lot of <laughs> could be a lot of the waivers could be crazy meetings trying to figure out you know is this really detrimental or not detrimental you know, two feet three feet what's that what's yeah. real number or you could always do a sliding scale of setbacks to you could, you know what I mean it doesn't have to be one number yeah well that would be good if we could do something. And then I think if we're going to make it easier, potentially, to do multifamily in, on South Main Street, we should probably have a preliminary component. We're not just giving away the store. But that requires a lot of careful consideration. It's not necessarily an easy thing. You know, it might be conducive to significantly smaller units, mm -hmm. right? The lots are uh, tight, um, mm -hmm. so smaller unit reduces how many cars those units have. Uh, you know, it's a different model, more affordable. Even even at market rate, is probably more affordable. And I think that's the kind of thing we'd want. Right, there's no sense in putting, um, you know, three bedroom, two three bedroom units over <laughs> a store. It just it makes no sense. Not there. We get that elsewhere. We have other places where we can do that. Right. Okay. The only issue is that you're going to need the parking because there is <coughs> transportation. No, we don't have a shuttle lane. Down the center once we do the road diet <laughs> monorail and the healthy corridor. Yeah. No, there's definitely parking is a big issue. You know, we're gonna have to figure that out as well. Right. And and you know, unless some of those tight lots, structured parking arrangements or shared parking arrangements are gonna be mandatory. 
not by us, but by, by the developer coming in and figuring out how to do that. Yeah. All right. So should I just keep working on some ideas? Yeah. You tell us what you, you need from us. Sort of been unhelpful lately, but <laughs> tell me what you I need. I mean, it's not helpful for me that I did this today and we, I'm meeting mm. this tonight. So no, I'm not perfect, really being helpful either. I don't feel either. guilty about not having seen it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all fresh in your mind. It is. It, yeah. yeah. Um, but, it's, yeah. All right, lots and two districts. Okay, do you want to look at that real quick? It's, I just took off the piece about multifamily. And My only issue I, is removing the aquifer protection district. Well, so I was thinking about That's this, that, well, so first I thought, should we expand it to include all overlay districts? Because the overlay district boundaries maybe aren't mutable, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, why would anyone even want to extend the aquifer protection overlay district onto more of their lot? I thought we just fixed that. We took that away. Remember where, where we, where a lot might have an aqua, the aquifer protection district hitting just like the, the tip of the corner. The entire lot was subject oh, yeah, to all those regulations. Yeah. Well, so the way it works right now, I can tell you. So if a lot is split and it's not entirely covered, the engineering department looks at the topography and just sees where the drainage goes and then determines like what really actually is draining to the aquifer. Um, and you know, so you, you either comply with the 2,500 square feet of lot impervious or you provide a system of artificial recharge for anything that's over that on the portion that's actually draining to the aquifer. So they look very specifically at topo. But if, that's how recent change. That's well, since I've worked here, that's the way it works. Um, yeah. You know, because the, the and the reason why they have to do that is because we changed it so it, right the aqua the boundary of the aquifer protection district is established based on the watershed, right? It is. Right. So, but if your and what we what we changed was before if any parcel touched the aquifer protection district, it applied to the entire parcel. So that made no sense. Right. Um, uh, but now, um, if you're do if you're changing the grade on your parcel, yeah, and it then all um, right. all drains into the cor this corner of your parcel that's in the aquifer <laughs> protection district, you're then changing the drainage structure of your site, right? And then extending the aquifer for what right. should be in the aquifer protection district, even though the line may not run that way. So they're doing the right thing. Yeah. I agree. Um, and But there's no reason that anyone's going to be like, I want to extend my aquifer protection district 30 <laughs> feet into my lot. See, I read it the opposite way. Okay. If you have a lot within and it's partially in the aquifer protection district, you can ignore all the rules for 30 feet. Say that again. So if you have a lot and half of it is not in the aquifer protection district and half of it is, you can ignore the aquifer protection district rules for the third up to 30 feet into the aquifer protection district. No. Well, and also like aquifer protection district is an overlay too. So like right. the underlying zoning <laughs> is, you know, those are the boundaries that are mutable, the underlying zones. Right. I would think. And then I don't know how we feel about downtown smart growth district boundaries or, but I left, I thought it, if we left it out, like, so the, t the two like natural resource overlays are floodplain and aquifer mm -hmm. and no person in their right mind is like willingly like extending those further into their lot. Correct. And then there's all the others, which I think could apply could apply to this. But the way I read this, that if you've got a lot and it goes into the aquifer or the floodplain, you can ignore up to thirty feet. I don't I don't I don't understand. Well, it depends if what the definition of a district is. Mm -hmm. But what are you extending to then be able to ignore? Like exactly. What, like what's going over? Like the aquifer protection is on top. Yeah. 
Any provision. Any provision. That's what you're extending, right? But the aquifer protection is in a district. It's not really a district. And that's right. the de and that's why I say it depends what the definition of a district is. So you can't if it since it's an overlay, mm -hmm. it is a district. district. It's, it is it's a district, but it's not in the strict sense of it doesn't have like dimensional requirements and and it's so that's why that's the that's the difference. That's the confusion. <laughs> It'll, it'll it is a be district a, that has it has requirements, but they're not dimensional requirements, right? There is there. Right, and the the aquifer district boundaries are based on topography, and the, you know it's not a. I just I don't see it as an issue. I really don't. <laughs> Could be missing something, but no, it's it's okay. We can put this out there for discussion. See if somebody else can think of it differently. I feel like well. this was written when the aquifer protection was the only overlay that, that existed, and they were just listing the overlays. And that was the only one. Because I think, like, it makes no sense. Or you can change provision where it says any provision of the zoning bylaw, any dimensional controls of the zoning bylaw, and that takes care of any, yeah, dimensional controls, mm -hmm. and that take care of it. So your setbacks and everything else could be applied into it, but then you'd still leave any overlays. And then we need to alone. say dimensional controls, uses, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things we might have to add back yeah. in. I'm just looking at it if it were me. We, we could say, provided, however, that this does not apply to overlay districts, but then in that case, then we'd be lumping in like smart growth, which I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, how do we feel about the lots that are split in the smart growth district? Should we be able to extend that boundary? If you simplify this language, you're saying that if the lot is split, then you can take the requirements for that part of the lot, which has frontage, and you can use those requirements 30 feet into the lot. Right. 30 it's feet into the lot or 30, 30 feet, feet beyond the 30 feet district additional. boundary? 30 feet beyond the boundary. So, right, so if it's split, you get from the frontage to the split plus 30 feet, right. correct? Mm -hmm. So it's about extending a set of regulations. It's not about ignoring regulations for an extended period of... I, I feel that in general, um, you asked a question, right? I feel that in general that the boundary for the smart growth um, overlay districts were developed intentionally. Um, I know there is one or two cases where some uh, there are five. five cases where parcels are split. Right, and it, because it matches business B, which split right. a few parcels on yeah. the eastern side. Right. Um, and like we would allow business B to be extended. Would we allow smart I think we want to look at those five instances. So if you take that away and just because it says not like more than 30 would. feet. If we got so a good smart for the project entire site. Mm -hmm. that needed that extra 30 feet and offered plenty of step backs and landscaping. and I think they're pretty small. They are. They're small little, lots. Small yeah. lots. So, yeah. so our smart growth development will be like the... Um, like the Chapin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I think, I, I'm not sure how, you know, how how many hoops we want to jump through to facil facilitate <laughs> something like that. I mean, not that that's bad, but facilitate in extending that or facilitate facilitate um, uh, the creation of another three-unit townhouse development. 
shoehorned into a parcel on the edge of the downtown because that's where right. we get. But then they'll just extend business B and put up a big, use the 30 feet and put up a big, you know, we have to figure out where, where to draw the right. line. Right. <laughs> So I, 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 I think extending the districts is a um, is a is a conversation that this town needs to have. Um, whether it's business B or whether it's business A extending through that little gap or something. I mean, we, you, you, right, all this discussion about trying to squeeze out more development out of the land that we have dedicated to, I mean, it, it, <laughs> come on, come on, you can only go so far, right? And, and, and not, you know, um, we, we, we gonna make some changes. I think that zoning boundary line should match lot lines. <laughs> but in 1942, when the zones were getting drawn, I did not work for the town. <laughs> what are you doing? Forty-two. I know my parents weren't even alive. So. <laughs> Now, the problem with extending the zoning areas, and this is what I saw when uh, Home Depot went in and Jordan's, and there was a ton of activity going on right up until they hit residential. And once they hit the residential, it's like everything stopped. If they could have continued going, I think they would have at the point. But the problem becomes, how do you control it? What, what residents do you let become business? What ones don't you? Where, where do you draw the line? Yeah. No, it, it, you're right. You're absolutely right. Right, and right now the problem is, mm -hmm. the problem is we have this system and this setup in town that was haphazardly developed, and no one has the, no one along that edge mm -hmm. has the right protections. No one had, no one. Right? No, some no. of the, if you yeah, think about, no, no, for example, but, corner of um, the gas station, the corner of summer, and south, the grade change, you know, on the back side of that. Yeah. Uh, the mobile station? The mobile station, right? There's yeah. significant yeah. grade behind Doyons and, and the, that yes. starts to protect those neighborhoods. Yeah. But yeah. not everyone has that. And so, right, so if you were to, if you were to sort of step back a little bit um, before all that happened and said, how can we take advantage of those sorts of things to make sure that the separation is, will work well, right. not like the back of, um, I don't even know what the name of the, um, the develop the the uh, restaurant is there that used to be Wayside Bazaar. Uh, Fusilis, I think it is. Yeah, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Sam's Bistro. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Something different. I mean that just yeah. doesn't that doesn't work. Um, Why? It was like that before. Right. It was like that before when the building was a. Um, s solid right it was a, a it was a solid wall wasn't much activity behind it and there was a there was a um, single family um, right that's a nice buffer between the use and the and the lot because there's a big wall there and then they took that wall down when the because that was the side of the building and put up a, a wall that was a little bit further away and then that area gets a little bit more activity back there because of loading and um and it's the the wall is a little bit smaller because the building was a little bit smaller and then suddenly all of that use that happens in the front side spills over into the back side so there used to be this nice wall that divided things and now there isn't well, it's like you, Awkwardly enough, right? <laughs> I feel like it's counterintuitive because you feel like if you had a wider commercial corridor, right, and with some bigger lots, you'd have more room to kind of like have the transition areas and have more landscaping right. and have a softer edge. But that's not the case at all. I mean, in the situation of Fusilis, like that's a pretty decent sized lot. 
but it's just like what was there before and what's there now is, is better in some ways and worse than others. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure that went in before we changed that 15 foot front yard setback mm -hmm. option. Right. So it had to be back. It yeah, had to be pretty, back yeah it had to be back, way back there. But it's just, I don't know, I feel like if we had bigger lots, we'd have more room to kind of negotiate these yeah. things. But yeah, sure. Then you just end up with people wanting to do bigger mm -hmm. developments and yeah. paving more. And Probably. It's, I don't know, it's hard. You're going to get two types of developers. You're going to get the unsophisticated, almost anyone can do it, cheap in townhouse, right? That's pretty simple for a builder to put up. Anybody can build a townhouse. And then the more sophisticated, the more sophisticated ones are like the shell station, you know, where you have to really figure out. Although that doesn't really have a good commercial base. Sonoco. The true, the Sonoco. Yeah. yeah sorry. You know, okay. the true mixed use buildings require a more sophisticated. Developer. I think we can encourage better mixed use on South Main Street than we're getting downtown because downtown is really about housing and. You know, the smart growth is just really about housing. And we can encourage better mixed use by like specifying what we want for commercial and then letting the rest be creative and flexible. I Not opposed to 100% commercial either though, on a development site. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's totally allowed right now. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> I guess, I think what we don't want is what's happening at what what number is the that? Start, um, 258, 262 Main Street. Yeah. Strip mall. Personally, right? Well, we you them. mean the the new proposal or the fact that it's just nothing is happening? No, the new proposal. Okay. I'd honestly have it happen and, and have to sit the there right for a while and get the right and development get the right there. Thing. Yeah. Right. Is right. better than having something that's there that's the wrong thing for, for, 15, for years. 15, 20, yeah, right. 30 years. Right. right. And that was our point. They showed us this potential, right. which we bought into. Right. We thought we made it work. And then uh, they came back and did something we didn't. And so, if there's some way that something like that doesn't happen, and um, by having some residential as an opportunity there, then then we're much better off. Do you think so? Because then you're in the same boat. If you only get a residential development, mm -hmm. not just no, 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 okay. no, 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 mixed so use. Yeah, have. no, right. adding, adding. I know what he, That's I what I meant to say. Yeah. Adding yeah. Um, residential onto. Yeah. yeah. My sense is that they want to do a mixed use building and they want to do more stories. That's my sense. Okay. Um, they can make that work. That's I can work like that. That's not going to be 50 units, but they could get something up there. My only fear is I don't want them putting in a commercial base that they just leave empty. Right. That was the cost. All right, so I have blank space. Let me put up my 15 units and make my money there. Well, I think the issue is, like, with the mixed use for that site, like, if they get enough land, they still have to contend with our current uh, zoning line extension issue and gross floor area issue, lot coverage, and, you know, so they're... The uh, residential piece that might not really be viable at the end of the day. Could there are apartments in the Fantasia building at all? Or is that just office? Office. I think so. I think it's all office. It'd be interesting to know how occupied that building is. Yeah. The parking lot's empty at the time. Yeah. And there's parking lot. I mean, that's behind. a big building for it to be empty. And I mean, I don't think it's empty. There's Domino's, there's a yoga studio, there's... That's at the bottom, That's but um, there's yeah. three, three stories Upstairs, at the top, um, but above it. Yeah. I, I've been in the building many times uh, for reasons, <laughs> but it seems to be very... It's not active. What you're looking at are a bunch of small offices of, you know, one twosy type of businesses. So you don't accountants and things like that. Accountants, lawyers, yep. a couple of doctors off. Uh, but that's okay if it's full because yeah. the developer at two fifty whatever was telling us they couldn't get any tenants. Yeah. Right. That's why they they chopped off the. From building. what I can see, it's at least eighty percent full. Well, that's that's pretty good. 
I think the commercial rents, I think what they were saying is commercial rents aren't high enough to justify the cost of construction given the increased cost of steel. Well, we all knew that. We've known that for, Don't for look at me. 20 years, right? <laughs> I mean, that's known new news. <laughs> Well, the recent Unless spike, you're in downtown Boston. There's a recent spike that they're dealing with because they weren't planning it out. Right, yeah, But yeah, there's yeah. other yes. construction methods. I mean, they're building hotels out of wood. Not that I'm necessarily in favor of that, but they could build it out of lumber. Do we have hotels, motels in this town? No. We have no provisions for them. But we don't That's have someone them. asked. <laughs> <laughs> that was very specific. Yeah, no. No, uh, we don't. Yeah. Then they used wood for construction of the old Romano's grill, and they had to rip that down because it started rotting because they built it wrong. Well, they probably used that EFIS crap there, and the wrong way to do it. I'm not saying to build it wrong, I'm just saying, you know, you can build it out of wood. It also depends on what you want your uh, return rate to be, whether you want your money back in five years or 20 years. Well, yep. we're not going to solve any of these problems okay. tonight. No. But I, I'll keep working on it, and we can, we, this is we can good nice stuff. work yeah, full set together yeah. of, um, you know, what those lots look like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. That's going to be good. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Is there a second? 11 o'clock. Jeez. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Oh, we're going to one. That was a late one.